All right, we're live. So, okay. okay, so for those who've missed, um, I just asked uh, Superhuman Dance what he specifically disagreed with in the... Um, well, we just started the live stream. So, I mean, hi, everybody. This is uh, Avi. Uh, he, um, I don't know, basically, I made a video a while ago about, what was the, what was that video called? What was the, um, something along the lines of, like, uh, um you were debating something with ask yourself, oh, it was positive and negative rights. That was the initial, my initial interaction with them. Uh, just seeing that, you know, they didn't really have it all together with the whole positive versus positive rights versus negative rights thing, uh, which, you know, is ultimately positive ethics versus negative ethics, which, you know, that was, this was just my first interaction with you guys. I mean, Avi was saying something along the lines of he had a, um, if you clicked your shoes together and you, you know, put some water on those shoes uh, and you could save a million children, obviously you'd have to bite. He thinks you'd have to bite the bullet on that to save all those children. But if you were to come at this from a negative utilitarian perspective, you would see that, you know, you'd have to answer first the question like what, well, what would these children specifically do? Right. So like what, like, what, would we know that there wouldn't be a future baby Hitler or a future, you know, mass amount of animal holocausters or you know, et cetera and so forth? So, you know, you have to ask these types of questions, specifics. It's about specifics. It's about nitpicking. Philosophy is about nitpicking. And that's all I asked in the uh, chat with uh, Mr. Ask Yourself over there. But uh, I got banned from the uh, thing just for asking that simple question. So are the invites out? Well, yeah, I mean, it's just me and you. Oh, okay, so so I just want to be clear. So what I'm here for, if we can talk about that as a secondary part of the discussion, what I'm yeah. here for right now is you are making a response video to the video we did on realism. And yeah. I want you to tell me what you specifically you've uh, disagreed with. Okay, yeah. So what I disagree with there is uh, this, the well, the initial, th I only was like two minutes into it or three minutes into it. Uh, well, we can go through the whole video if you'd like, because that's really what I'm here for. I mean, I made we made a video yeah. on realism. And Ooh, that's gonna take a really long time. You had all. I mean, hold on. Um, well, it's I, a very important topic, right? So, yeah, I think, well, I think yeah, it'll be good for us to I explore. First this. off, I don't believe in moral realism at all. I, I I don't think it has any foundation to it. I've made videos against it in the past on this channel, like all the way going back like probably eight months ago is the first video that I made against moral realism. I've actually had a discord with a, a guy, a YouTuber named Can't I Natalist uh, on this subject already that's well you know, documented on my channel and everything. So uh, you know, I'm not a moral realist. I'm not a moral objectivist. I'm not a, um, uh, you know, the, I'm a, I understand what those things are. And this is one of the major problems with, uh, uh, ultimately, you know, your friends with ask yourself, uh, ask yourself's argumentation is that he uses morals when those, if you actually look up what those mean, uh, we'll just get up a, a definition of them really quick. He uses them interchangeably with the word ethics, right? And the only things that he uses to defend name the traits is ethics. He doesn't use morals, right? He doesn't use individual. Can you define traits. out the difference for me? Yeah, yeah, sure, hold on. So, moral versus uh, ethical. So, all right, here we go. So, uh, I've made videos about this in the past, but uh, yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll discuss this right now. So this is what, uh, can, can I show my screen here somewhere on this? Whatever, we'll just flip this around and show you guys, because I can see what you guys can see. So, uh, so okay, so, Ethics, what are they? This is a law website, ethics versus morals, diffin.com. You guys can go check it out if you want to. Uh, so ethics are rules of conduct recognized in respect to a particular class of human actions or a particular group or culture. So in this case, the group or culture would be vegans. Vegans are a group, a culture, people that are ultimately expressing their ethics and influencing other people, other people's ethics with their ethics, right? So, and then morals, however, so again, just so you guys can see here, this comes from external features, so social systems, ethics do, which is ultimately the only way that we learn anything about any of this stuff is from 
social systems and ultimately other types of systems, not just social, uh, but systems as well. Uh, we don't learn them from our individual, right? Like you can't have thoughts about information that you don't have. And that's what morals are defined as. So they're defined as uh, principles or habits with respect to right or wrong conduct, while morals also prescribe do's and don'ts. Morality is ultimately a personal compass of right and wrong. So it's a internal feature, personal choice, personal compass, uh, which is ultimately not a basis to build anything on, as is established by uh, you know, personal choices and an argument. So, so I'm just going to jump in here. I'm just going to jump in here. So for the purpose of definitions and yeah. philosophy, we're going to either use the inter the IEP, the Internet inter Encyclopedia of Philosophy, or the Stanford. Uh, the Why? Stanford uh, Encyclopedia of Philosophy. Um, because those are the accepted uh, definitions that are used in philosophy. And so I would uh, yeah. request that we use proper notation when discussing well, philosophy. Well, I mean, just as long as we're not using ethics and morals interchangeably and we understand that, you know, individual morals are different than ethics and ethics ultimately influence. So if we're going to define oh. ethics and morality, we're going to use either the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy or we're going to use the IEP. Uh, sure. Well, you read, read me both of either one of them. That's fine. Sure. We can use either one you would like. Are we invited out and are we live now, by the way? Yeah, we're live. Okay, perfect. Um, sure. So I can read out the Internet Encyclopedia of Philosophy on Ethics. So ethics mm -hmm. is the field uh, or moral philosophy that involves systematizing, defining, and recommending concepts of right and wrong behavior. Okay. Okay, so that's morals? That's ethics. Ethics, ethics, okay. Yeah. Okay. And um, well, this is different definitions already. Like, yeah, so we're going to use the definition, w which is what philosophers use, which we're going to use the definitions on the this uh, IP is a peer reviewed philosophical uh, source. So I think we should go with that for sure. The definition of morality? Um, no, like how, how decisions are made on ethics in the real world. Ethics. So I'll morality. read it again. So the field of ethics or moral no. philosophy. <laughs> this is about this is an Systematizing, a, this is defining, ethical. and recommending concepts of right and wrong behavior. So it's no. a field. It's a field, and it in, it's the field is concerned with systematizing, defining, and recommending concepts of right and wrong behavior. Sure, yeah. That's systems. what ethics is. Yeah, it's okay, a, that's great. I didn't hear that system. initial thing you said, systems. Systems is perfect. If you had it on the screen, I'd be able to it's, know it's, what you're, I'd be able to it, read it. it, it it's, it's a field that involves systematizing. Yeah, systematizing. Yeah, that's fine. Defend so, and the, recommend. Do you think that you can have thoughts about information that you don't have? Do I think that I could have thoughts about information that I don't have? Yes. Well, I can answer you like a sophist by saying, yeah, I just thought about it. But no, I don't think I can have thoughts about information that uh, I don't have. I, all I could do is think about think of the fact that I don't have it. You have to have a system. There has to be a system in place to be able to understand that thing first. Would you agree with that? Well, I mean, it's what, what it, what's the basis for it? Essentially, well, that's I mean, that's the basis a question would be of, like if you answered no to that question that I just said, you you have omnipotence. You'd be in, you'd be insane. Yeah. You know? So so <laughs> essentially, that's why we made a video on reject. We made a video on why we are not moral realists. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, yeah. so why would we even ask people about moral value? Is my question. Why wouldn't it be about ethical value? So if we look at name the trade. It's about so. so I, I just want to re redirect uh, because we made we made, a, we made a video. We made a video on why we don't consider ourselves moral realists, and mm -hmm. why we don't consider ourselves moral. I uh, uh, sorry, uh, uh, re realist with respect to metaphysics either, or realist with respect to mathematics. And yeah. uh, I'm I was wondering what in that video. Now, what in that video we disagree with? Okay. So what we disagree with at the beginning, the only thing, I only got two minutes into that. So what we disagree with in that video, which is I only got two minutes into uh, when I was discussing it, was there's pragmatism isn't a piece of, you know, like anyone that's using that in philosophy, which is, I'll just define pragmatic really quick for everybody that doesn't know, okay? So this is what I'm using when I say pragmatic. We're going to use the IEP again, and we're going to use the pragmatic, we're going to go to the pragmatic theory of truth. Okay, all right, that's we fine. We can use that one as well. That's fine. We'll see, we'll see if they all fall in line with everything here. Go ahead. 
Okay, because there's very different theory of truth is very important. So you can be whether you're a realist or not on different things actually can depend on your theory of truth, right? Yeah. So there's the car. So you know, there's the correspondence theory of the truth. There's the coherence theory of truth. There's deflationists. There's uh, pragmatists. So it's it's a huge topic in philosophy. Yes, I just realized I don't have my uh, good mic plugged in right now. Is my sound coming through okay? Uh, I can hear you. It's not the best sound quality, but I can hear you. Hold on one second. I'm going to hook up that good sound quality mic real quick. Try to swap it over. This was all really off the fly, off the cuff here. So I'd like to set up a time in the future maybe, but uh, also. But, I mean, apparently you guys don't want to get corrected about this stuff. So uh, you know, I can see why you wouldn't want to do that topic. I, I, don't, I don't understand why. I mean, it's so simple you know, to have these discussions. Well, you know, it, 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 you know, anything that knows anyone about this, we need to be very, very clear. You need to be very yeah. clear on yeah, the definition. Very clear. I'm very clear. That's why I've, no one has, Ask Yourself's never made a video debunking anything that I was saying. You know, so, or like, or debunked anything that I've ever said. And in fact, he's been so unclear that when I corrected him, on these subjects, he's banned me from the rooms. If you watch okay. any of my videos, I'm gonna, I'm I, gonna I mean, redirect I mean, the conversation like off to the topic that we're discussing. Fully dismantling what he's saying. I asked you, I asked you what you disagree with in our video. You said you disagree with the word pragmatic, so we're defining the pragmatic theory of truth. Yeah. The pragmatic theory of truth holds. It's a, it's a theory of truth in philosophy. Yeah. The pragmatic theory of truth holds roughly that a proposition is true if it is useful to believe. So it's true with respect to its usefulness. Essentially, yeah, which is preposterous. Proof is useful to believe, and <laughs> utility. Essentially, that utility is essential mark of truth, um, and that uh, so certain beliefs are undeniably useful. They would say, even though on other criteria they are judged to be objectively false. Okay, so with so it's important. So with respect to a correspondence theory of truth, you can say that certain useful things can be false. But with respect to the pragmatic theory of truth, they're true in respect to their usefulness. Right. And then I, there's I, other I, views of truth. There's co the coherence yeah. uh, view of truth, which is things are true with respect to its comportion with our own systems of belief or our axioms. So when you say things well, are axioms, true or false. Axioms, it, theoretical things, are the best things to build arguments around. Our axioms are... Yeah. The foundation is what we what we unjustifiably assume or bootstrap or um, or for some people think that they are instantaneously justified things that we just build themselves on depending on your view of the axiom. So mm -hmm. it's yeah. important that we when you when when someone says they're a pragmatic theor theorist of truth, what you have to get them down to is say, well, if something is not useful and it exists, do you think it's not true? And they would say, well, no, I'm saying it's it's true. A pragmatic theory or theorist of truth may say, well, it's true with respect to its usefulness. Just like a correspondence theory, theorist of truth will say, it's true with respect to its state. It is something that is, has a state of affairs in the world. A coherentist theory of truth would say, it is true with respect to that it coheres with my axioms. So I personally take the approach that just say what it is true with respect to which theory of, tr of truth. So I can say something is True with respect to a correspondence theory of truth. I right. can say something. Right. So we've got we've gone into this pretty. You've defined this pretty well now. All right. So, so let's just. Uh, have, do you think you've defined it well, or? Well, well. Like so now, so now, what what do you? Um, and give me a timestamp if you can. So, uh, what with what you specifically disagreed with with uh, our realist the realist video that we were talking about? No, it was only you, here. We'd have to go through that whole video. But well, you, 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 you should have yeah, all I got to do is you've only gone through a, cert, a short amount of it. I mean, let's let's. I want to know what you disagree with us on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, the the primary thing at the beginning was that you got. It wasn't even what you guys were saying at the beginning, but obviously later on there were some differences. There were some major problems in the logic. Um, the major problems ultimately were uh, pertaining to. Uh, you guys just aren't defining this neg this word that's in the title of this video. That's why I made it in the title of this video. This this word has never been titled negative utilitarianism. We we weren't talking about negative utilitarianism in well, the video. If I recall, we're right? talking about we were, we were talking we were talking about Anything moral realism. This ultimately has a negative. So I'm going to redirect you to the topic at hand. 
which is you made a video discussion. Hold you on. made a video in response to our uh, moral realist video. And I want to know specifically what you disagree with in our video because you made a response well, video a and you live, were- I wasn't done yet. Okay, you were making a live stream. So let's yeah. talk about it. Let's, we, can go we can go do the live stream now. We can oh, go through God, the video I'm and we can- a time. I've already, I've already know we, how, where you guys are wrong and why you're wrong. Okay, so tell us what we're wrong in and why we're wrong in, in that video. Well, you're wrong, not just in that video. You're wrong in like dozens of other videos with dozens okay. of other topics. What are we wrong in in that video? So if you think that positive rights exist. Okay, we never spoke about positive rights in that video. So can you tell us what we're wrong in, in that yeah, video? I mean, you've been utterly brutally false. So Okay, so we never I, mentioned anything I, about positive rights in the video. Can you tell us what we're wrong in, in that video? Okay, well it wasn't a video yet. It was an it was a live stream. Okay, so in your live stream, can you tell us what you thought we were wrong on in our video? Yeah, pragmatic pragmatism has nothing to do with like if you don't discuss any negative utilitarianism. When human beings are existing, ultimately, they're trying to reduce negative, okay? This is just very simple. They're trying to reduce the negative around them. There's no... Do you understand this is a theory of truth and not a theory of morals? Do you understand, like, when, when, you're, when someone's talking about they're a pragmatist or they have the pragmatic theory of... If they're t set, talking about that they have a pragmatic theory of truth or a pragmatic theory of morality, these, mean, these can mean different things. So which one, which one was he talking about? Which one would you disagree with? Well, he's talking about pragmatic theory of truth, right? Well, you tell me. You disagreed with it, so. He, he said. He would you, would you like to give me? Would, how about this? Would you like to give me a timestamp of the part of the video you disagreed with? Uh, no, I mean, there's no real reason to do that. Well, I mean, you uh, you I disagree with yet, it, so uh, let's go. Hello, you there? Disagree with? You there? I'll pull it up. I'll pull up Wait, the video right now. Lagging really bad. Just settle down. Okay, no, well, well, it's not lagging on my end, so you tell me exactly. I'll listen. I'll I'll tell you what. I'll do you a favor. I'll I'll turn up the volume. I'll listen in right now, and I'll tell you exactly what JHC said. Yeah. You didn't get that far in the video. Yeah. Well, no, yeah. No. Yeah. I mean, I was just about to highlight what you guys were wrong about later on. I watched the whole thing, like maybe about. I I watched specifically like probably forty five minutes into it or so. Okay, but, uh, so, so let's get down to where you disagree. I, like I want to hear the context of the video where you disagree. All right, dude, you got to shut up. I got to talk, all right? Okay, be quiet or I'm going to mute you. This is insane. What? Settle insane? down, okay? We got to make an argument. This has to be a discourse. I have to talk. All right? So when human beings come into existence, ultimately, all right, they always experience pain. Every single time. This is you're you're going off topic now. The reason I'm no, I'm talking to you is because I wanted to. And I'm talking about okay. negative utilitarianism. Well, I'm negative I'm here utilitarianism because utilitarianism well, contrasts moral I'm, I'm realism. Here. It's a fact. Moral I'm, realism. I'm, is I'm here. Is I'm here because negative you utilitarianism. You made a video about our our. Yeah. You made a video about yeah. uh, a moral realist a uh, the realist video that we did, and I'm yeah. concerned about what you found yeah. that you disagreed with. Now you're trying to. <laughs> We and can talk about do, negative I'm utilitarianism. I'm stating that. I've stated that multiple times. You guys aren't even talking about negative utilitarianism, and that's the only way to come at this topic. So let's just okay. Well, down. well, the fact that that's the point that we weren't talking about negative utilitarianism. We were talking about well, no, ethics, that's all the you to talk about when you talk about this. Otherwise, you you're you're false. Normative that has ethical the most evidence. Meta ethics. Listen, negative utilitarianism is the only thing that has evidence to it. There is no moral realism. There Do you understand no the difference between right. meta-ethics and normative theory? Yes. What obviously. is the difference? Meta-ethics and normative theory? Normative theory is like consequentialism versus deontology, okay? And I'm a consequentialist. I understand what consequentialism is. It's, it's the only thing I've ever seen is that there's consequences to people's actions. There's never been any sort of logic behind any sort of uh, duty or other types of bullshit in normative ethics that I've seen. Okay, okay. and what is and what is meta ethics? Meta ethics is like understanding, I don't know, asking questions about preposterous things like where did the where did human beings uh, where did I'm sorry where did uh, the universe come from right like but that's not what meta ethics is. I can I mean, explain I, meta ethics to you if you'd like. That's not what meta ethics is. What's your definition of it? 
Meta ethics has to, relates to the founding and, and just to be fair. I thought you said metaphysics. Let's Sorry, just flag it. I know what meta ethics is. I know what meta ethics is. What's you know, meta ethics? It's a of ethics that you know seeks to understand the nature of ethical properties and statements, attitudes, and judgments. Uh, you know, so ultimately we can understand what these things are by evaluating the world around us. We can understand what they are more likely. We can make it a lot more likely. So, so, so not exactly. So meta ethics is the branch. It's a branch of analytical philosophy. And the purpose of meta ethics is to explore the status, the foundations and the scope of moral values, the properties. Yeah. And How worlds. is that not exactly so it's, it's what the, I just Because it's the foundation. It's about where, where ethics are founded I, I from. So it has said, to do well, whatever exactly normative what thing I just said. It's with, exactly what I just said and you're just not listening to what I just said, dude. I'm listening exactly you're, to what you said. You are so far up your own So, so uh, all I'm, uh, the, the point, the, the key down, here okay? And is, get corrected really quick, okay? This is, the, the correction is that there's a negative utility when you come into existence that you always feel pain. Well, you, we were not, that's a normative, that would be a normative theory, and we were yeah, not. Yeah, and it comes from theory. this meta-ethical theory yeah. that there's. So there's meta-ethics, we were strictly speaking about meta-ethics, we were not speaking about normative theories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay. is there something about meta-ethics that axioms. you disagree with us on? Axioms, okay, and, dis and deciding what is true from axiomatic things, not pragmatic bullshit. Okay, so, so do you, so I've been pragmatism can be, a, can be an axiom in and of itself, are you aware of that? No, it's not. It's I mean, it, it absolutely can be. So sure, you can sure, say sure. you can say yeah. things are things are right in the sense that of their utility as an axiom. You can structure that axiom up all you want. That can be an axiom in and of itself. All we were talking about now, whether you should have that axiom or not, would be a normative theory issue. The meta ethical issue, okay. meta ethics it's itself, is the axiom. topic at hand now. Okay, it's not just whether it's an axiom; it's whether it can be tested as an axiom that's true, right? That's what we have. Test to an do. axiom that's true. How, how would you test an axiom that's true without comporting with your own axiom? So we have to be very clear about what do you mean by the testing. way that you do that is by simply evaluating it farther, right? Take that axiom and try to build evidence around it. That's the only thing. Try to build do. evidence with. So here's the issue: the problem with building evidence to test your axiom is that you end up in an infinite regress. So for example, let's say let's say I have a mathematical system or a physical physics system. And I, I say, well, it works because I can do all these things. But what the problem with that is, is that all of these things are only being measured with respect to the acceptance of the axiom in the first place. So it boils down to either circular reasoning or an infinite regress. That's called Munchausen's trilemma. Have you heard of Munchausen's trilemma? It's either circular reasoning, infinite regress, or an axiom. It's, it's the nature of how we prove things. Yeah, and I just stated at the beginning, we can understand things more than we don't understand them. Did you not hear me say that? How do you understand things more than you do not understand them? By what metric? By evaluating the world around us and being able to, you know, okay. understand. How do you, how do you, acts. how do you know that you, and again, so this is the problem, right? So how do you know that you're evaluating the world around you? Okay. Because you can understand that, you know, things add up, right? Like they, you can test math, you can test, you know, but you don't understand all of math. You understand all of, you know, I mean, there's huge okay. chunks of math that ultimately don't, we don't understand. How, how, really. how do you understand that things add up? Based on, uh, you know, understanding more of the processes behind it. How do you understand the processes behind it? By examining and understanding the nature of, you know, the properties, whatever. How do you understand there? and examine the nature of the properties? By testing the axiom. How do you test the axiom? By you just keep, you, you try to figure out what the, you know, what the things are that are around you. So do you want to get How somewhere? How do you figure those you? things out? I mean, do you want to get somewhere? And the point, the point I'm trying to make, the point, the point like, I'm trying to make oh, here. You don't know where the start of the universe happened. The, the point I'm trying to make. That? You want to ask that question? The, the point, the point you're, you're, you're going on this type not, of kooky ass shit that you're going on right now. Okay. The, 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 We'd be asking that question. We'd be like, where did the universe start? Oh, let's, let's all answer that question. Right. Wait, we don't have the answer for that, but we do have a lot of evidence pointing to that. It's not a goofy ass fucking Jewish God or something like that. Right. So, what? okay. So this is yeah, a stupid you're, I think question. You're missing the, you're missing the Where's point the start here. of I don't logic? think you're understanding Where's metaphysics. The start of reason. 
Where's the start of logic? Where's the start of reason? Where's the start of the universe? It's a preposterous question to ask. We are here now and experiencing the world around us. How do we want to do ethics better? Okay. How do we want to do ethics better? The way that we do ethics better is that we actually evaluate the world around us in an axiomatic way. All right. So do you okay, want to get the so, fuck so, off of this high pedestal where you're like, Ooh, where's the universe start? I'm so fucking smart because I'm asking where does the universe start or where does fucking where does the thought start or what you no one knows where that shit happens. OK, OK, OK. You can so, understand so up to a certain point where, uh, you know, that it, what you're saying is more likely, just like you can understand that three plus three being six is more likely then uh, it not. Okay? I don't think you're understanding what I'm trying to get at with. No, I fully reason. understand. What I can, you're I can, to I can. Well, tell me, you tell me. How about you tell you're me doing, what I was trying to get at? What you're doing right now is you're reducing it down to something that is so irrelevant because you don't have the answers for these things at all. Okay, and I don't have the answers for these things at all. So why would that be the basis upon which to discuss what we should do here and now? It's preposterous. Well, that's you what are, the this is the same type of religious can, can, you, can I get a word? Shit can I get a word? Some, no, you've talked for like fucking 10 minutes now defining a bunch of stupid shit and using fucking dumbass uh uh, you know, I'm so much better because I'm making it from from a fucking random ass, uh, you know, position of where did God God down at the beginning of the universe or something. You're doing the exact same thing that people that say God done it at the beginning of the universe. Well, do. that's yeah. not my claim. Can I? Can no, I, it is. It's precisely the claim. It's precisely the claim. You don't want to discuss the actual topic at hand, which is negative utilitarianism and why it's true compared to moral fucking realism. And I'm correcting you assholes about this topic and you're being fucking useless assholes right now. So shut the fuck up and listen to what I'm fucking saying, okay? So the topic at hand was... Not another fucking piece. We're more realism. All right. All right. So, all right. Listen. So the topic at hand was realism. You're muted. Uh, right. right. You're muted. Just settle down. Okay. So, so listen, I gotta the, get this. The out there. point is, is that negative utilitarianism. Axiom, axiom has, has not. Dude, just keeps talking. This is incredible. That ethical. He <laughs> just doesn't stop talking. Okay. I mean, I, and well, I can that's the, that's the part of the issue because it's <laughs> what you're trying to do is normative theory. Right, but so you're talking about normative theory. We were talking about meta ethics and metaphysics. <laughs> Are you unmuted right now? Okay. Yeah, I'm unmuted right now. Okay. Yeah. All yeah, right. Good. Go ahead. So we're talking. So okay. if you want to build it, if you want to go back to the very fucking start of whatever. That's it what is. meta ethics and metaphysics is. Yeah, I know, and that's, that's why. What it's our, that's what our video. That's what the video was about. So what do you disagree no, with us in the? No, realm of it wasn't. Meta -ethics it was about moral realism. <laughs> That's a, that's a metaphysical. That's a question of it relates to your theory of truth, metaethics, and metaphysics. So realism relates to moral realism relates to metaethics. So oh, dude, that is that. you're you're taking this conversation into normative theory, and what Wait, the conversation was about in our video was not normative theory. It was actually metaethics. So that's the time. conversation. So why do you disagree with us on metaethics? You're wasting my time. I'm asking a question. Okay, why don't I agree with you on meta ethics? Yeah, we, where do you not agree with me on meta ethics? Where do I, I t just, you can't ask questions like, where did the start of the universe come from without evidence leading up to that? So you can only understand the evidence leading up to that, right? The question is not the start about the start of the universe. So the question is- well, The question is about the start of ethics, which is ultimately the start of the universe. Which is so exactly what I'm saying. The, the so question, ethics is not the start of the universe. So the question is, how do you know what no, you realize listen, in the question is metaphysics? Go back to the start of, listen, you can regress all of history back to the start of the universe, okay? So where did the first thought happen, okay? I, I, we know that it happened about 541 million years ago here on planet Earth in the Cambrian explosion. So that, okay? that's not what the topic is. So the metaethics is not about where the universe started or where the first uh, thought started. It's about how yes, it is. It's, it's, of your it's informative theory. system. No, listen, it's the branch of ethics. Around that seeks to understand the nature of ethical properties, okay? And ultimately ethical Found, Foundation, the key word is foundation you've skipped over. So I'm gonna go to the ethical, IEP again. Ethical thoughts, they come from this ethical the, thoughts, dude. Key words, whatever gonna, the fuck you wanna- I'm gonna go to the IEP again. Incessantly, dude. And you just wanna talk incessantly, you don't wanna get corrected. 
and just correct it. Just get corrected, okay? This is absurd. Go to the IP again. It's lagging. It's lagging. I can't hear you. Go ahead. Say it again. What are you, what are you, what are you talking now? Metaethics is the start yeah, of ethics. Where does ethics start at? Where does the thought the, start? The Where founding the of ethics. Start? It's the Where branch of analytic philosophy that explores the status, foundations, and the scope of moral values, property, and words. So the question is, what is the founding of our ethical systems? Our norm, what is the founding of the normative systems? Then it's not about Pain the normative systems. Pain is bad. That's what, what? it is. What pain is, is bad. Pain Unnecessary is bad. pain. Okay, so how do you know how do you know that pain is bad? Because we have evaluated evolution, and we know that evolution is uh, makes pain a fact. Pain is a fact of evolution. So whatever is a fact of evolution is bad. No, 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 no. Pain is just bad because. So why pain, is so why? How do we know pain is bad? Because unnecessary pain is unnecessary. Do you agree? Okay, with how that? do we know unnecessary pain well, is bad? Do you agree with the fact that unnecessary? How pain how do we know that unnecessary pain is bad? Okay, because unnecessary pain. What, what do you mean? How do we know that unnecessary? How do you know that unnecessary pain is bad? That's the meta ethical question. Yeah, I mean it's unnecessary. It's just it doesn't have to happen in the first place. So it's okay, so doesn't there are a lot of things happen. that are unnecessary. There are unnecessary. There are things that are un this, me Hold picking on. up this is an unnecessary act. Does that is it bad? Hold on. Hold on. Okay. So, so just just chill out first. Right, so unnecessary pain is unnecessary when it doesn't have to happen, right? So this didn't have to happen either right now. I could didn't have to pick this up. So is it bad? That's, that's not pain. What are you is talking something about? Something bad because it is unnecessary. No, listen, coming into existence, right, is always a serious harm of how how do you how do we know that that is the case? Dude, how am I gonna talk if you just keep talking over me? You're not I'm the reason I'm I'm doing this is because you're not He's lagging. Is, is he lagging for somebody else right now? So the question, then it's a different story. So my question I'm to you. I'm trying to answer the question, and you're just talking over me. You are dodging the question is what's happening. I'm not dodging you any questions. You're playing dodgeball with me. So I, or you may not understand the question. Would you like me to repeat it? Is bad. I, you're asking me why pain is bad right now. How do you, I meant, no, I'm asking you how you know pain is bad. What's the founding? How do I know that pain is bad? Yeah. Because coming into existence is always a serious harm and not coming into existence is simply not a serious harm. So think for a moment. Avi, How do you know that serious harm is bad? I'm about to explain that. Think for a moment, Avi, about the moon or Mars or anywhere where there's no sentient life. Okay, so on Mars, there's no sentient life right now. And there's no sentient life that's ever came into existence as far as we know, okay? Think about Mars, barren, there's nothing on it. Obviously, that means that there's also no negativity because there's no sentient beings there to experience the negativity. How do you know coming into experience or experiencing harm is bad? Well, I just explained it because you could think about Mars for a second, Avi. Do you, are you thinking about Mars? There's I'm no thinking about Mars. Tell me, how, how, tell me how harm is bad. Okay. Well, do you not I'm think it's bad? I'm thinking about bad? it. I got it. I got it. I got it. I'm thinking about it right thinking now. about Mars right now? So I'm you, thinking about it. So do you not think that death is bad? How do you know that death is bad? I'm not the one not answering questions here. You're not answering questions, sir. My, I, I will answer your question. I will, I will answer the question. The answer is I don't. So the answer is I actually don't know, and I bootstrap it as an assumed axiom. I don't claim to know. <laughs> well, if you think you, you can. Bootstrap it as an yep, assumed axiom. Yep. Great. That's yeah. an axiom. That's okay. an axiom. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a good axiom, right? Yeah, I mean, and, and 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 my question to you is that the reason that nature of bootstrapping, the nature is the topic of metaethics, not normative theory. We can talk about what we bootstrap in our normative theories, but the topic at hand in the video that we were talking about had nothing to do with what we were bootstrapping. It was the nature of things existing or not existing. That's what moral realism is. That's what metaethics is. So. You can talk about different ways. You're, that you're discussing like just meta ethics, but yes, you're we were discussing meta ethics in the video. It was not a normative theory discussion. Okay, but you're, you you said the. Can word you just explain realism. to me the difference? Can you just but explain? You saying, but you said the words moral realism in the debate. 
Can you explain to me the difference? That's normative ethics. Can, can you normative explain? You no, it's not. Realism. Moral realism is not normative ethics. Yeah, yeah, you're being silly as fuck. It's Did you like to look up the definition of moral realism? It is not normative theory. Yeah, it's it's moral realism is meta ethics. It's not normative it's, it's theory. It's like altruism things. You know, I mean, you could no, have things no, that come from no, that, it's not ultimately okay. Normative but that's not what it is. Moral that's, realism. That's that's not what moral moral realism is. Not altruism. Moral realism deals with the it, the nature of how morality exists, and if it exists objectively, it can be broken down into two different classifications: the robust moral realist and the minimal moral realist. The robust moral realist would reject non-cognitivism ever theory as well as moral non-objectivism. The minimal moral theorist would only reject non-cognitivism and error theory. Do you understand what those mean? Yes. So what is non-cognitivism in our theory? Well, I mean, I could, what, what, by your definitions, what do you well, want you me just, to Well, you just, you told me you understood what those are. Can Every you tell me what those are? Every definition ethics to you that are in, you're like, no, it's my, this definition of the Stanford Encyclopedia of dupa dupe because I want to avoid fucking understanding. Yes, it, it's important we use the, when we're talking about words, it's important we use definition. Now, I, I'm not going to split hairs even. Yeah, if you would like, I can read, I can read the definitions to you. splitting hairs this whole fucking time. Would you like, would you like me to read the definitions? I, I asked you if you know what those words mean. You said yes. I do know. Can you tell me what, what error theory and non-cognitivism is? Yeah, error theory is like, you know, I've did, I've done videos on this in the past. Google in the past, Google air theory on my uh, channel. But if you want to Google the, we'll do the Stanford encyclopedia version for you, Mr. Autist. All right. Jeez, oh man, Stanford. Uh, philosophy. I mean, if you're going to say yes, you know what they are. I mean, it, it, it looks been... like you're looking it up. It's fine. If you want, if we can go through the definition, I can, I can, I can define them for you, but it seems like you didn't know what it was. So why did you tell me? No, I've made videos on this in the past, Dick. Heather. Well, if you made there. videos on the past, then you should just be able to answer my question, right? Well, yeah, but I mean, you're using, you always split hairs. I've, you, I've, I've given you theory topics about you know, meta ethics and things, and you've been like splitting little hairs. Well, oh, you gave me the. <laughs> oh, look, look, look. So, can you answer my question? What What is. You expect me to just be able to recite the Stanford definition of fucking air theory? G what, give me, give me a about? definition. Shut the fuck up, dude. You're silly. What, what is non cognitivism? You're and fucking theory. silly. Settle down. It's moral anti realism, okay? That's what it ultimately is. It is no, it's a it's not moral anti-realism. It's a it's a subset of moral anti-realism. Okay. Yeah, okay. So it's a subset okay. of moral anti-realism. And what is spe and specifically and sp and specifically, I mean, because you and the only reason I'm asking I'm asking this is because you said you understood what it was when I asked you. Yeah, I do understand what it is. So what is so what is error theory? In the past. What is error theory? Uh, it is based on the Stanford definition that you want so badly because I've already, you know, it's, you know, the argument from, uh, there's the argument from queerness. Okay. That's not what error theory is. That's an argument that relates to error theory. So what is error theory? Well, you, well, ultimately the arguments are what builds things, right? And that's what you want, right? <laughs> what is the definition of error theory? Okay. All right. You want just the definition of error theory. Well, <clears throat> Uh, there's only arguments. For so, you. so here, here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Superhuman dance. So, if you were to ask me, fuck up. If, if you were to ask me what the definition of error theory is, and I were to say yes, right now I can give you the definition of error theory without well, I can give it you up. a bunch definition. of arguments for it. So, no, no, no. I'm not talking about arguments. I'm talking okay, about the what do you want? You want you want actual definitions of it. The okay. definition of error theory. Yes. It's it's. So I have already and I've already told you. Hold on. I've already I, when told I you. say yes to the question, if you realism. were talking about something I didn't know, I wouldn't say yes. That says that it's basically like nihilism. That's what it is. No, it's not. Error it's theory is not nihilism. Nihilism. Yes, it is. No, it's, ethical. No, it's not. Can you tell me error what error theory is? is? Ethical nihilism. Can you tell me what error theory is? It's ethical nihilism. Okay. What is the specific statement that error theory makes regarding to the truth value of moral statements? What? Look, why would you expect me to know the specific that's thing? That's the specific the part of the definition. That's so what defines error theory. You're so fucking weird. Why would so you expect error, me to know the exact definition of error theory on the Stanford Encyclopedia of, of, of fucking philosophy? Like, well, I, the only reason I asked you is because I gave you an example and I asked you if you knew what that was. I've and explained you, said you exactly what it is. I've told you. No, yes, I still haven't gotten the definition. That's exactly what it is. It's, it's nihilism. Of, no. That's what the conclusions are. Ultimately, nope. of it. It's a conclusion nope. of the arguments, is it not? Nope. 
It's not a conclusion of the arguments. It's nope. just you can have thoughts it's about defini- information. It's, you a don't definition. Have. it's a you definition. It's a definition. Thoughts about information that you don't have. It's, it's not a conclusion definition. of the arguments. No, it's, it has we can't a have the argument first. We have to know. We have to have the information without fucking you know uh, to be able. To, you know, I mean, we just have to have the thoughts about the information first. That's what you know, Mister Avi. Okay. Thinks. You can so just it's have a the specific, thoughts about the information it has a specific first. Definition. I can give. Would you like me to give you? I can give you the definition. Well, hey, yes, yeah, say what it is. It's. Eth- I already know what it is, though. It's. It's moral anti-realism. It's ethical nihilism. It's a subset of moral anti-realism, and it is not. It is not equivalent to nihilism. It is one hundred percent equivalent to nihilism. Yes. Okay. So what is? What are the statements? The truth statements. What are the truth statements that a nihilist would say regarding the meta-ethical uh, theory of? Uh, in response to their theory of truth, regarding their theory of truth, what would a nihilist say about the truth statements of moral nihilism? statements? You don't and think what that would, I'm asking you a question. I'm asking you a question. I'm asking you what would a nihilist say regarding the true value of moral statements and what would an error theorist say regarding the true value of moral statements? An error theorist would say that it's just all subjective and that we have no... That's um, not what an error... That's not the key that an error theorist would say. The name error theorist might say that, but it doesn't have necessarily have to be by the definition of error theory. So what are the state what would an error theorist say regarding the true statements? You're Mr. Definitions over here, but not we're not gonna get the definitions on the table. We're not gonna have a listen. Listen. I mean, dude, are you like full blown autist or something? Listen, it I I am not gonna be weaseled around by different definitions. I we need to operate on the same definitions in order (laughs) What are you talking about? We are operating on the same definition. Okay, so what is the definition of error theory? It's if you want just a very simple mm-hmm. terminology for it. Uh, I don't know if you'll be happy with this though, okay? But you know, it's just moral skeptic, moral skepticism, basically. Okay. No, that's not what it is. Moral error theory makes it's statements regarding the truth value of ethical statements. What does a moral error theorist say? What does an error theorist say regarding the truth value of moral statements? I mean, I've said you, I've told you this a bunch of times now. The truth value of moral statements, it's it's they say that it's subjective to everybody, you know, which is ultimately That's a true. moral non objectivist. You're confusing then, an error but, theorist with a moral non objectivist. So a moral non objectivist. What's your definition? Say, Go ahead. Just tell me what your definition okay, is. Okay. So error theory, notice I'm not gonna look this up on Google. Error theory is that moral statements do have truth value. Just know the, fucking definition. the truth value I'm is. I'm about to give you all the answers to this shit through argumentations that have been okay. made over this. So error theory, argumentations, right. as I've already done multiple times on this channel. You can't have moral uh, fucking objectivism, but you can't have answers that are right and okay. wrong to moral. You understand questions. the difference between moral non-objectivism moral and error theory. Questions. They aren't moral. They have nothing to do with morals. They have to do with ethics. Ethics build other people's ethics. Unless you think you can have thoughts about information that you don't have. Ethics build other people's ethics, okay? So this topic that you're discussing here is totally fucking preposterous. Do what you are the definitions the of the Stanford Encyclopedia of boopa doopa doop I'm gonna fucking dupe myself into thinking that I'm smarter than this guy because I fucking know what the definition of random fucking stupid ass shit is. Who gives a fuck, dumbass? I'm well, just the reason, the reason it's important. Topics, the reason dude. it's important is because you made, you made a topics. video. You Not made a video about, definition. Who's about our Who's smarter? I'm Mr. Dr. Avi. And I want to know who's smarter, not what's right or wrong. I want. I got to sell my fucking drugs to people, right? That's what you fucking do at your job, dickhead. Oh, you went to so, school so, to sell again. drugs to people. Yeah, and then you realized that when you came on here and you were like, oh, shit, my life fucking sucks. I better start realize, figuring out this fucking ethics thing. And so you did, and you figured it out a little bit with Ask Yourself, and now you want to discuss... Where did the start of the universe come from and all that other shit that you were saying earlier, okay? No, dude, just shut up, all right? Pain is bad because it, everyone here agrees that fucking, you know, ultimately they don't want to die. Why would you want to be, why would you want, you want to die? Nobody wants to die. Even somebody that wants to commit suicide didn't want to die initially, okay? Pain is bad every single time when it doesn't have to happen, right? So if you didn't have to die in the first place, you wouldn't want to die. So you wouldn't, you know, want to come into existence if you're being logical. Super, superhuman dance. Superhuman dance. Do, do, you understand, do you understand the difference between uh, error theory and moral non-objectivism? Yes, I've already defined. What, what's the difference? Error theory and moral non-objectivism? Yeah, what's the difference between error theory and moral non-objectivism? 
air theory is just a different form of nihilism. It's a different form of rejecting. It's saying that there's, you know, queerness in the world and all that stuff. And like, we don't know whether or not there it's true. You know, the argument. No, that's the, actually the exact opposite of what error theory okay. says. Error theory doesn't say we don't know if it's true. Well, let's so read the Stanford yeah. definition of encyclopedia on moral air theory. All right, so let's go down here and click air theory. Mm -hmm. Air theory, understanding the nature of an air uh, theory is best done initially by example. So that first fucking definition it gives is uh, the argument. That's from not theory. the definition. That's the relation of understanding. It's error Mackey's theory. argument for moral air theory. It's Ma you know. That's an Mackey. argument for error theory. That's not the definition of error theory. Oh my god, dude, you're hopeless. Okay, can you tell me? You don't, I, even, want to discuss, you been, you don't even want to discuss the argument. By the way, I gave it. you the definition. I just read you. I gave you the definition. I just like said it. Okay, say it again. Say it again. Okay. Go so ahead. error theory is that moral statements do have truth value. But the value is false. Okay. It's preposterous. So you're I'm saying not, that. So you're saying that there, you're an ethical. That's ethical nihilism. Then. So the value would be false. So there's no so value all, to start with. You're saying no. That there is no a value. value there is a truth value to start. There is a truth value. It's just the value is false. So truth values false. can be true or false. Good. And ethical Good. statements have a truth value, it's and the value is false. Thing. It's a, it's a horribly statement. contradictory statement. You don't have the value initially. It's a preposterous argument. You don't have the value initially. Do you understand what truth value means? You understand what you just said. What you is truth value? value? Initially, you don't have the, you don't understand. What, what does truth said. value mean? You think that you can have, what does true value mean? What, what, do what is value? truth value? What is what truth is, value? What does it mean to have a truth value? Tr a truth value? What does it mean to have a truth value? Well, ultimately, if you want to talk about real things here so that people can start to actually understand what the fuck is going on, okay, pain is bad every single time when it doesn't have to happen. I'm sure you could agree on that, right? Okay. What does it mean to have a truth value? Why can't you just answer my question? We've, we've, we we've aren't getting anywhere with your bullshit. To have a truth value. You want to just continue getting nowhere? I'm asking you what it means. If you'd like, I can tell you what it means to have a truth value, but I'm asking what it means to have a truth value. What? I mean, so you're reading you're off. You're saying you, you made a claim that it's a, that error theory is a self-contradictory statement. I'm trying to get you to understand. Okay. So what is, so you said, you, yeah. you said it's a contradictory statement because it's yeah. contradictory to have a truth value and a, that it's false. So I'm asking you, yes. what does it mean to have a truth value? Do you understand what it means to have a truth value? Yeah, something is more likely than unlikely. That's what a truth value is. No, that's not what a truth value is. That's what it is. should be. That's okay, but that's be. not what it is. Well, that's what it should be. Okay, that's what okay, truth is. That's truth? not what the definition of a truth, that's not what truth value is. So truth value just means that things can be true it or false. Things are true or false. It's, it has a value to it. A value can be true or a value can be false. Okay, that's yeah. it. It has a- Okay, so, that's fine. So great, yeah, all right. So, so your definition yeah. is- what? I mean, no one understands what the fuck that you're saying. Like, so that you want to start talking about things that means are that these statements can be true and they can be false. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. so that's have, what it means to have yeah, ethical truth statements value. can be true and can be false. Great. Yeah, that was so what it means to have the truth value. Saying. Now, okay. ever I mean, theorist initially okay. after that you said that that but val but that all the values are false. That's initially. what an error theorist would say. An error theorist would say it has a truth value. It could be true or false, but all of the values are false. The values are false. Okay, so all the values are false. So you're saying that there would be no basis upon which to build something. Well, if you make any ethical statement, the ethical statement is false. That's what an error theorist would say. Right. So do you think okay. that? Pain so, is an objective feature of evolution, or no? I think pain. I, I think but pain. I think pain. I think pain is an objective physical feature of evolution. Yes. Okay. Great. Now so you question, know that so now, now my question would be: you know that it's more likely that, that, that it doesn't physical exist. effect of so wait, evolution. Hold on, Jesus Wrong. Christ! Let me fucking talk for a minute. For fuck's sake, you've been talking this whole time. You've been talking about your all your little you know things and trying to get fucking definition y definition on me. Okay. But you don't have to fucking do that. Just well, it, 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 the reason I, it's important to me is because the entire topic of our video was not based on normative theory. It was based on meta-ethical theory. So one yeah. theory, one ethical meta-ethical theory we've covered was um, no, yeah, you're okay. Oh, so you're saying that, but you're discussing moral realism in the fucking video. 
Yeah, that's what that has to. That's a lot of ethical. I'll take timestamps out and everything of that video where you're like moral realism. So we're going to discuss on moral whether or not morals can be real. That's normative ethics. You're discussing no moral moral moral, moral realism is meta ethics, not normative ethics. Goes down to deontological versus consequential things. Okay, so that's not what was discussed in the video. Consequentialism was not discussed in the vid video. De okay. Virtue ethics was not discussed in the video. Uh, de deontology was not discussed in the video either. De uh, categorical imperatives were not discussed in the video. Kantianism well, was not discussed in the video. We uh, discuss you discussed this in other video, which you okay, but we're, you made this video on our video that was we, we just made, and I am asking you what you disagreed with. Now no, it's important that we focus the conversation. The air theory on meta -ethics. is fucking bullshit. It's bullshit. Okay, so can, so you and now do you, now do you understand the difference between error theory and moral non-objectivism? Define it with your definitions, because I have my definitions here. But okay. if I make the arguments for the stuff, you literally shut well, that. Well, well, the I mean, the reason, okay. the reason. Go is, ahead, define it. Okay, Just sure. Up. Yeah, sure, sure. So, moral non-objectivism is the statement that ethical truth, ethical statements are not objective. Ethical statements are subjective. They're sub. It's, it relates to this with my, it's mind dependent. It's not good. mind independent. Okay, good. Now we're getting somewhere. All right, we're getting now, somewhere. Good. When we so talk about it is it is subjective. Ethics and morals are ultimately they are subjective in that you experience them subjectively, just like you experience numbers subjectively. And numbers in the real world, we don't know everything about all those equations. We can't get to the bottom of all those equations. But what we can ultimately know is that pain is bad when it doesn't have to happen. That's a reasonable okay. And thing. how can we how can we know that? We can know that pain is bad when it doesn't have to happen because we can know that uh, unnecessary pain is unnecessary. So if, if evolution is makes, something bad because it's unnecessary? So evolution makes pain an objective fact. Mm -hmm. Okay. How and how do we know that's bad? An objective fact because of embryonic development. Why is evolution a you know fact? You tell me. Now I get to drill you with, uh, you know, intelligence shit. Well, I, I accept it as a fact because I ex it comports with my baseline assumed axioms, which is logical. Oh, no, that's not a fucking definition. That's not the arguments for why. Why is evolution a fact? Tell me. It's I consider it a fact because it's true with respect to my setup axioms with my assumed axioms. <laughs> well, no, but what are the axioms? It's derived. Because, oh yeah, so, why, it's, why it's, is so evolution, mathematics, on, logic. Why is I accept math and I accept fact. logic. I'm asking you why evolution is a fact, and you can't even tell me why evolution is a fact. So I just told you. <laughs> I just told you. Oh, so God. it's a fact because it can. Mr. Point. Intelligence I, over here, no, Mr. No, medical no. Doctor, it, he doesn't even know why evolution is I, a fact. If you were listening, I actually just told you. It's a fact because I have assumed base axioms, which are mathematics, logic, and it comports with, it stems from that. It comports with that. It's the evidence is, is evident. It's evident to me based on the evidence that comports with my base level axioms. Okay, which those is aren't a, very good answers for this. Okay, so, so I can explain what those mean if you'd like, if you don't understand it. No, I understand it completely. It's just a preposterous answer for why evolution is true. Okay, how is it preposterous? Because evolution is true based on things just by itself, like the fossil record makes mm -hmm. evolution true yep. by itself. Yep. And but dodge you, as well as other things. The fossil I mean, record. I mean, you think you have thoughts about evolution just, that you don't have or something? So why do you think that endogenous retroviruses? Listen, no, there's no. There's, yeah. Go ahead. So, so, say so, so, so there's, there's yeah, and there's endogenous retroviruses that are evidence for evolution and common ancestry. No, no, no. Homog also, homogenous genes, right? Yeah, homologs. Yep, absolutely. And, and uh, embryonic development. And, yep, so there's atavisms as well. So the, the other the other important so you're thing is what I'm saying. So okay. So, but, but the point but the point is the point the central point is all of these things are particulars that are evidence, but the evidence needs to be interpreted, and the interpretation comports with logic, and based on logic itself, which I, is an axiom of mine. The conclusion is something that comports with that axiom, and that's how I get to evolution being an accepted fact. I don't, I can't know evolution is true without my axiom. I can't know evolution is true beyond my axiom. Yeah, and that's what that's I'm saying. Something. I agree that you can't know something for certain. Okay, but you can get not for not even for certain. Like in in terms of even even if even in, in the statement that you could know something to a certain degree. That also runs into an issue. 
at the end of the day, you just have to accept and structure an axiom. And I can mathematically show you how it runs into an issue. Logically like. consistent with that, then. So right? here's 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 the here's the issue. So you should, would you, you like, better, would you so like me to logically consistent with that? You'd have to reject evolution. Well, no. I, I, the reason I accept it, I don't think you're understanding. The reason I accept no, it is I because I boots at at the base level. I bootstrap an axiom and just accept it without trying to say that I know it. That's the only way you can get around it. And I can mathematically show this to you if you'd like. So, for example, right, right. if you were to say that I know something with 90% certainty. Let's say I, I make that statement. I know evolution is true with 90% certainty. In a couple of minutes. Then the next question, you're, into, you're over talking me. Would you yeah. like me to continue or? Okay, yeah. so the next, the next question is, how do you know that you know evolution with 90% certainty and with what confidence that you know that you know evolution with 90% certainty? And you said math though. And, <laughs> and, if, and, if, and if your answer, if your answer, if your answer is anything less than 100%, what's going to happen is the total knowledge of percentage confidence reduces. So for example, if you were to say, I know that I know evolution is true with 90% certainty with a 90% certainty, so I'm 90% certain that I know evolution is true with 90% certain, mathematically, you only know it to be true with 81%. And you right. can keep asking this question ad infinitum until it actually reaches the limit and okay. approaches 0%. So, so, so you want the to way around it... We've already been... The no, way, listen. The way, we've already gone through way this. way around it... A lot. Now I get to start. Through, the way around that is to say, yeah, at some I level, that. I assume it so to be how, true. Okay, so it's not a claim right. that I know it at the base oh. level of my axiom. I'm not claiming that I know knowledge. I'm not claiming that I know logic. It's just the base level, I assume it to be true. The statement that I could know yes, so you're something. Great. All right. So good. Mm -hmm. So how you're subjectivist. Yeah. I mean, I would say I'm a subjectivist. Okay. Great. Great. We're getting there. We're getting there. All right. So. Okay. So hold on one second. So, okay. so anti-realism can be no, no, broken no, down into so three. So, so you're going to flavors. claim for a second. You're going to claim that something is true for one person, but not for someone else. When in fact, it is true for everyone. It's objective. It's it's as objective as, doesn't mean universal. So hold on. It's objective as demonstrated. You didn't let me fucking. Uh, you didn't let me talk, dude. You've done nothing but try to talk over me this whole time when I'm just trying to lay down facts because you don't I want wanted to answer something you said. You said it. Evidence, okay? So listen, claiming something is true for one person but not for someone else when in fact it is true for everyone, pain is bad in this case, okay? Uh, as a as is demonstrated by empirical evidence. Okay? Pain is bad when it doesn't have to happen in the first place. When it doesn't have to happen in the first place, it's bad. So how do you how do you know pain? So how wait, how do you know pain is bad? So, so listen, you're being a subjectivist right now. You're, mm -hmm. you're Yep. Yes, yes, great. Okay, so good. You're a subjectivist. So so logical form of this, okay, would be, you know, person one claims that Y is true, and person two claims that Y is true for some people, but not for everyone. Right? That's a unit you're confusing universality with subjective. With su there's subjective and objective distinction is not the same thing between the universal relative distinction. Do you understand the difference between those two things? Just so you don't agree with this statement here. Person you are, you, all I'm saying is that you've conflated. You've said you, to me, it seems like you've said because something is subjective, then it is then and then you went on to its universality. The universality relative and universal are not the same things as subjective and objective. Yeah, you understand so you the difference? Like universal, whatever. You, you okay? So just just settle down. Just do you agree with this statement right here? Okay. So just yes or no. All right. Uh, unnecessary pain is unnecessary. Yeah. Okay. By definition. Good. So, and the way that you know that pain is real, ultimately, if you're going to use the most empirical evidence that you can use, is that evolution is real. Okay. And evolution is real because we know that, uh, you know, uh, embryonic development is true. Homogeneous genes are true. Um, we know them with respect to our assumed axioms. To the extent that our axioms yeah. are true, those yeah, things okay. are true. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. What I've established this whole thing on already. Yeah. What I started this whole thing out with is that yeah. we can only know so what do you? So what do you disagree with in our, in our, in our video? It, the, the fact that you're not talking about negative utilitarianism, which is what I'm you talking about. So, so you, the, what you disagree with in our, in our video is the fact that negative utilitarianism was not mentioned in our video? Yeah, and you're discussing moral... We were discussing meta-ethics, not normative theory. 
but you mentioned moral realism, which is ultimately we we mentioned moral realism, which is which is has to do with meta ethics, not normative theory. Yeah, I mean, it can it can have to do with no, no, it can't by def. We can look it up a definition. It's not it nope. Moral realism is not a normative theory. Normative theories are things like deontology, consequentialism, virtue ethics, pluralism, the intuitivism. Those are normative theories. Okay. What we were not discussing, those are all things we were not discussing. Yeah. What we were discussing oh, is meta ethics. So right. the moral I realism. In your video, but I listened for 45 minutes and you guys were discussing moral, whether or not things can be real or not, meta ethics, this mm -hmm. type of shit. Yeah. That's what and we were discussing. We were not discussing normative. So watch my video that I initially made debunking what they were saying about positive versus negative rights. Okay. And we were talking. We're talking about the video that you made a live stream about. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's see. So, what do you we're disagree with in that video? Talk it about has nothing to do with moral well, normative theories. What it had to do with? No, it does. It can. Have to do no, no, it didn't. It does. It does. So you're saying that you're subjective. The founding. It's the founding. It does. It, it's the, it follows from men. What do you disagree? What do you disagree oh. with? What do you disagree with in our video in relation to our meta-ethical theories? Not the normative theories. We weren't discussing about normative yeah. theories. The, so the meta-ethical theories are pointless to discuss when we already have evidence that takes us back to where things start. Okay, We already understand those things up until a certain point. So you don't want to ask – asking a question about something – that is uh, that you don't have any evidence for in the first place to ask the question. Like for example, if someone says uh, God done it, right? All right, they are just making that premise, right? Do you believe in God? Are you you're an no. atheist? Okay, you're an atheist. Uh, I would say strictly technically speaking, I would have to say I'm agnostic. All right, well you're agnostic. Okay, so that's preposterous. All right, so which kind of wait? Agnostic? What's what's preposterous? Hold on. Well, what kind of agnostic are you? Are you a deist? No, I'm not a de deist. Is not an agnostic. Do you understand the difference between a deist and a hold on? Wait, 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 wait. Do you understand the difference between a deist and an agnostic? How am I a deist? For it. What arguments do you think there are that are persuasive for a god that you're not an atheist? You're an agnostic. Do you understand what I mean when I say I'm agnostic? Because it doesn't mean deist. Yeah, I understand what you mean. But why do you, do you think that the deist arguments are persuasive, and that's why? No, you're I, I don't think the deist arguments are persuasive. Okay, no, so why are you an agnostic then? Why because am I agnostic? Because I it, because I cannot because I don't believe I can because I, I don't believe I could know with a hundred percent certainty that an entity does not exist. Okay, so you also can't know for one hundred percent certainty in any murder case. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So when I'm agnostic, so so, do you so, think so, I, yeah. so do you think that we shouldn't convict people of murder? Because of that? Well, no, that's not what I said. I don't also live my life as if God exists. I live my life. I live my life in it's not recording. It's going to be I live, recorded. Well, I know it's going to. Oh, I'm glad it will be recorded. But uh, if you would like me to, if you would like me to, subjective explain. about whether or not you think that a murderer can be convicted of murder. If you're going to be saying these types of topics, <sighs> look, look. Do you want me to? Do you want me to answer? If you want to be a logically or? consistent subjectivist and just be like, we can't know anything. Because we don't know 100% for certain, even though we can figure out exactly that, you know, the gun that the murderer I live, had. I live my life. I don't live my life like, as if a God exists. I don't live my life as if, a, as if it's a 50-50. I live my life as if I'm highly unconvinced and unpersuaded. And I would say the same thing in the murder case. I would, I would say we should act the same way. And so you know, all I'm saying... Hold on. But listen, when promoted with evidence and when you deny evidence... I'm not denying yeah. evidence. Okay, so now you're conf you're conflating. So when I say when I say evidence, all all the point is that I'm making is that we're talking about how you know what you know and if you can know anything for certainty. Now it doesn't mean we shouldn't operate based on certain principles. And I or started certain. this debate out so, by answering your questions cordially. I accept we certain. Not know what certain. You have enough, we can certainly know more. We can make it more likely than unlikely. And you've done nothing but so 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 no I what exactly. strictly speaking you're to strictly your speaking intelligence over me as though that was an argument stri <laughs> strictly speaking so you have strictly fucking speaking, definitions of things stri and stuff strictly like that. speaking well, how is that a fucking argument for your position it's not you're being you were being so, a total so, asshole so hold so, on so listen so you're a speaking, subjectivist you're a moronic fucking subjectivist now shut the fuck up and listen claiming that something is true for one person but not for someone else when in fact it is true for everyone so it's an objective as demonstrated by 
That's it's universal. So that's the claim that it, it is universal. It's a subjectivist fallacy. Okay, so it would be the same thing as saying. Do you understand that subjective and objective are not do not mean universal might not be and the relative. most healthy habit to start from, right? You know, you, smoking might not be the most healthy thing to start from, right? And I'm just saying that. And then you say smoking is unhealthy for most people, but not for me. That's a straw man. Ultimately, smoking is unhealthy for everybody. Okay, so it's a subjectivist fallacy. Yeah, you certain things. So, no, so so certain things are th relative, and certain things are objective, and certain things are. Re uh, certain things are relative, and certain things are universal, and certain things are objective, and th certain things are subjective. These are very different things, and they relate to different things, and they're they're orthogonal to each other. So the objectivity of something and the subjectivity of something is orthogonal to the universality of something and relativity of something. Do you understand that? Hold on, I got to Google this word orthogonal real quick, as I think every other human did. Orthogonal. So, uh, yeah, all right. So, of or involving right angles. Okay, so uh, right angles. So it's orthogonal. In other words, the objectivity of something, the mind independentness of something, doesn't necessarily relate, doesn't, doesn't follow from the objectivity that it's universal, and the subjectivity of something doesn't necessarily mean it's relative. You can have subjective things that are universal, it's possible, and you could have certain objective things that are relative. Okay, but, and vice versa. So, but you're saying that you don't think that pain is bad is an objective feature? Do you think that's well, it, it, it would it would depend. So certain people, there are actually certain people who experience pain as well-being, believe it or not. They, they're pain receptors. If okay. you unnecessary pain. So we're talking about like, unnecessary and unnecessary uh, stimulation of their type C fibers would result in them experiencing well-being. Type C nose receptors in the result them in context, there are some people. Right. In the context of the argument, though, which is and, that it doesn't have to exist in the first place if you never come into existence. No, I understand. But what I'm saying is that all the point I'm trying to make. No, you don't understand because no, 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 you're talking so, about already existing. So that's not understanding. You were talking so, about so, already Again, all I'm trying to illustrate to you is the no, difference well, between universality out, and subjectivism. Because something is subjective, it does not the therefore mean that it is universal. And not existing. So certain subjective things. Are also no, certain things that are subjective are out. also relative can be relative and certain things that are subjective can be universal. That's the difference. Yeah. Okay. So you're talking about meta ethics, right? Yes, meta ethics. Great, great, great. So where did the universe start from? Where do you think it started from? Uh, the consensus among physicists in a temporal realm, it would be from the Big Bang. It started at that temp right. spatial so temporal the Big Bang. Point. This is what you're ultimately asking. This is an this who is a technically this is who an unknown. Who made the Big Bang? We don't actually know the answer to that question, and we don't know, and we also don't know if it if some if it was ever made or if it's just a B theory of time perspective from a four dimensional. Exactly. Do you wait? Exactly. Wait. Do you understand what I mean when I say that? Or from a B theory of time standpoint? Yeah. What 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 is a B theory of time standpoint? B theory of time standpoint. Yeah. I mean, it's like whether or not time existed for before after. No. no. Okay. That's well, not what B theory of time means. Explain what you mean. Though. B theory of time essentially you would look at the universe from the start to beginning of the universe and yeah, it's dude, as opposed to the a theory of time topic. my point well, you is said you understood what b theory of time means would you like me to explain it to you i mean you wanted me to explain it to you you just gave the wrong definition of the b theory of time okay just settle down dude all right well, so you, listen you the point is is that you are asking i answered your question by invoking question. the b theory of time you're, you're asking the point of the, you're derailing the topic you're no, I answered your question with the B theory of time from a B theory of time standpoint, and you, I asked you if you knew what I meant by that answer. You said yes, and I asked you to define it. You couldn't. You gave the wrong definition. We don't have to discuss that right now. We can discuss what what I'm saying right now, which is that you're asking a stupid question by discussing meta ethics. It was actually an answer. So I, you asked me. You asked me the are are origins of the universe. I gave an you an answer. I gave ultimately, you you'd be a subjectivist twat, which is what you've already fucking like said you were basically okay that you think that you can deny fucking uh objective empirical things which is just based on the fact that you can't know it for certain you think you can I, do that i answered your question do you think you can with do the, that do with invoking the b theory of time i mean you're not answering my question no 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 you i answered your question you asked me about the universe you asked me about the origin of the universe my answer yeah. would be related to the b theory of time universal 
Shit. I'm asking, I'm just, said, and I made sure you. Okay. That's a stupid answer because you don't have the answer for. Do you the understand my movie. answer? Do you no, understand what my answer is? Back to that, to, and get back to that to the point where you just think that like you asking where did the universe start is a great fucking. So so uh, again, so, without so, any uh, evidence, by the way. So you have to so again, use the evidence my, my to answer. ask whether. No, shut up, dude. You have to use. Are, the do you want evidence. me to answer it? Or you not? have to use the evidence. To, you have to use the evidence to discuss whatever it is that you're about to discuss. So ultimately, you have mm -hmm. to use features of the world that we already know. Yeah, are sure. Here. And my evidence would be the, B th the the relativity, the theory of relativity, which comports with the, the B theory of time. And the B theory of time allows us to look at the universe more of as a t the spatio temporality of the universe more as a yardstick from a start and stop point. And so the answer to what happened before the Big Bang, the answer may actually just be that. The universe always existed, always meaning throughout all of time, and it just has a, it doesn't, it has a start point the same way that a yardstick has a start point, and it may have an end point, just like a yardstick may have an end point. And so the key here, and this is something that the, the even the Christian philosopher, William Lane Craig, actually admitted, that the Kalam cosmological argument doesn't actually work if the B theory of time is the case. That's why he spent so much time trying to reject the B theory of time. Uh, so in any case, my answer to this is we actually don't know. It could, it could be anything. It could be a whole bunch of things. But one thing it could be is that the universe just has a start point the same way a yardstick has a start point. And to ask what came before that is just to ask what spatially came before that and would, wouldn't make sense. So it has a, because what begins to exist only necessarily has a cause in the sense that things ha that come into existence have a cause, but in the sense that things begin to exist. So for example, the yards that can begin to exist doesn't video. necessarily have a cause. So that's my answer to you. Now, do you understand what I just, just said? Do you understand the point I was trying to make with the B theory of time? Yes. It, what is it? What, what was I trying to say? What I'm trying to say. It's irrelevant. Well, no, could you just tell me what I was trying to, what, can you just explain back to me what I was trying to say? Quack, shut up. It's off topic. It's off topic. Well, you asked me the question. I gave you the answer. So I'm just making sure you understand what my answer is. Listen, my point is that you can't know for certain where things start from, where they, where, where it came from. Okay. We can, we can only, if you have the answers to this, by all means, tell me, but yeah, we could discuss the beat. I don't know it in the deep sense. No, I don't know it for certainty. I didn't know it for certainty. Okay. Nope, I don't know it for certainty. So I'm going to. Settle down. All right. So you can't understand where the start. Yeah, I don't, I don't know it for certainty. So I'm just going to ask How you are again. You yourself. That's really fun. I'm going to. I'm going to ask you again. That's really um, fun. This whole conversation. So, so I'm going to ask you. What do you not about. understand? What do you not understand from my answer and how it relates to your disagreement in our I original video? I understand what you just said. It's off topic. It's preposterous. There's no reason to discuss it. What we are discussing right now is meta ethics, and you're trying to say that you can't yep. discuss normative ethics at all. You can't discuss evolution is true. You can't discuss any of these topics. The topic of our of video was meta ethics. We don't have to start figured out. We don't have to start figured out of meta nope. ethics. Therefore, nope. we can't discuss That's, anything and everything. That's and not what I said. Figure anything out. What I what I said was we made a video on meta ethics. We did not make a video. When, when your response in your live stream, it was a response no, to our meta ethics video. video. Positive versus negative okay. rights. Okay, but that's not preposterously yep. wrong. Yep, that was and a I've video we made. Yep, that was a video we made in the past, and we made a video now about meta ethics. Yeah. Now you, it seems you disagreed with some things in our meta ethical video. So I am asking you what no, you I disagreed with in our video of meta ethics. Listen, and you've mentioned moral, you know, you're talking about mo how to derive things from real versus not. The real. founding of our moral structure. Yeah, I've already established this on this in this video, okay? But you're talking about pragmatism and I just discussed or we discussed it earlier on in this what pragmatic meant, okay? And the fact yeah. that you thought that axioms and pragmatism were separate but then you thought that also that you can have it well the well they are you can have an axiom that is pragmatism you can have that yeah, as an that's axiom what i was just going to say i was just going to say that you can also have the axiom that builds pragmatism as well okay but mm -hmm. the, the axioms are what establishes things uh better axioms than just not you know proper axioms right like you can have a premise like somebody can have the premise god done it and that can be their axiom axiom Okay, but it's a preposterous axiom because we know that there's no deist gods because we can look around us. Do you know why we, yeah, I mean, well, you've been doing this asshole shit to me this whole time. So do you know why there's no deist god? Why, why there's no likely? deist god? I why don't believe there. 
I reject the evidence that I'm not convinced by the evidence for a uh, deist. Okay, well, what is the evidence that there is no deist God? I don't have the evidence that there is no deist God. I just reject okay. it on the nature that you I do. You have there is evidence. There's information. Can I? Can I? Can I? Estab- can I? Estab- I don't have. I can't establish proof that there is no deist God. Yeah, well, tell, it's just. Tell me it's why. just something. Because that which is asserted without evidence can be rejected without evidence. That's actually, uh, you know, what uh, Christopher Hitchens? <laughs> yeah, I mean, come on, dude. It's, it's, it's true. Smoker, he was that a would... right, so just... wait, 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 hold on, hold on. How is what I said not not the not, not about? Not, wait, wait, wait. No, it's a true statement. Like that, that which can be asserted without yeah, evidence can be rejected without evidence. You were responding and saying Christopher Hitchens smoked and drank. How is that? Yeah, relevant? yeah, but hold on. So he's a dumbass. But uh, he didn't have a lot of wait, information. Wait, 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 What's what? what I was just saying. All right, so let me define for you why, since you can't define the evidence why there is no deist God. I mean, you have not, you just said that. You're that trying was to define evidence, evidence, evidence for why there's no deist God? Yeah, go ahead. Defi- by definition? The yeah, definite, there's evidence, definition. Of evidence is the particular about, about reality. It's not something you, that it is by definition. It's, some, it's Evidence is a particular. If you're asking me to define evidence why there's no deist God, my no, answer no, to no, you. No, I'm asking you to define the evidence. There's arguments for this. I'm at, my my argument <laughs> is that my argument is that there is no. You don't have the arguments. You don't even my, know. My argument, just my, argument, the bush. my argument is that I see no evidence for a deist god. Therefore, not- therefore, I do not accept. Therefore, I do not accept the deist god. That which is asserted without evidence can be rejected without evidence. So the proposition that I believe in a deist god would be false. True. So it would be it would be untrue I, to say I, that, I that, that you god. don't have that you could evaluate later on. Okay. So if you can actually, that you might be able to evaluate by looking farther into the argument, right? So like you well, want, there was you a want that information. But I guess I, it, I would accept it if, if, if that really happens. But yeah, well, the there point, is, it really does happen. But the point there is, is that, no. Right, right, what, what do you mean? There's, there is evidence. I'll define that, that right now. I'll define why there's no DS God right now. Okay, go for it. Okay, so here we go. Since uh, you don't want to, so I will, okay? There's no DS God because uh, it's, you know, you would have to say that creating uh, a couple hundred uh, million years of sentient life here on planet Earth, having its intestines ripped out and dying, uh, you know, just of being eaten alive, of, you know, hundreds of mil- trillions of this instance happening in different organisms, you would have to say that was intelligent. That was something that an intelligent being would do, okay? And then also simultaneously create a whole of calculus and logic. So he'd have to be a complete dumbass to create that initially, and then also create all of calculus. So there's no possible way a god done it in that in that area okay you can know Why like it have to be that a god that that a god is intentionally doing it i mean that deism doesn't commit a yeah, well, benevolence again, or a deism doesn't commit god. an omniscience it wouldn't be intelligence it wouldn't be a super intelligence he wouldn't have omnipotence he wouldn't have anything like that so he wouldn't be able to create everything if he well a, de- a deism contradictory well, shit he creates a, a deist can create, shit. He creates a deist God would be shit. able to create it, but it just wouldn't intervene. I think that's the idea, right? The, the deist God wouldn't be intervening at all. It would just be oh. setting up something and, and pressing the button or no, no, pressing no. go. Yeah. Okay. So hold on. So he would then he would have to be a fireman that starts fires, right? Well, oh, deist, a deist God would set up. No, not necessarily. You're presupposing that the deist God would think that these suffering things are wrong in the first place. A deist God doesn't have to care. It doesn't have to care it's about not, suffering or anything like that. Suffering is bad. I mean, we can we can see. It doesn't have to. It doesn't have to view suffering as bad. A deist God. In the first place, it's it's it, it's bad. When no, it, no, no, no. How is it? How do you know it's bad if it doesn't have to happen in the first place? <laughs> Just because wait, something does is unnecessary doesn't wait, make it bad. So you think that unnecessary pain is necessary somehow no that's not what i said okay all right well you just said why do you think that i mean so I like, no i'm saying the fact that something is necessary right. or unnecessary right, so, is or thought no, right, so, i'm saying that something is necessary or is unnecessary is strictly speaking orthogonal to whether it is good or bad now what i'm saying is that you said a deist god couldn't do couldn't do any of these things so you have an argument 
that a deist god couldn't do these things in a world that generates pain because that would be bad. What I'm saying is from the perspective of the deist god, a deist god might not regard that, might not regard that as bad. Like a fireman that starts fires and he would have the intelligent. No, it doesn't have to be a fireman in the first place. It doesn't, a fireman is, you're presupposing a fireman is someone who views that fire is bad. It could be a fireman that doesn't view that fire is bad. Yeah, great. Well, insane, then, because it is bad. It is bad. Well, you, you how do you know? Okay, well, how do you know it's Mars? bad? Because you think about how Mars. How do you know it's bad? So think about Mars for a second. There's no negativity happening on Mars. How do you know there's no negativity happening on Mars? Because there's no sentient life to experience that. Do you want to say that you think that okay. there can be negativity? Are you talking about negativity from, a, from, from an objective standpoint, that it is negative that there is nothing there, or, there's negative, or are you talking about negativity from a subjective standpoint or objective standpoint? Negativity, like it doesn't have to happen in the first place, okay? Negativity means, so anything that doesn't have to happen in the first place yeah, is let's what talk about it from an objective standpoint. Okay. Okay. So if I don't need, hold on, just to be clear. So if I don't need to take this and raise it up and down, and I did it anyway, if it was unnecessary for me to do that, is that negativity? No, there would be, no. There, listen, yeah, I mean, yeah, ultimately, yeah, because it didn't even have to happen in the first place. So you didn't anything that doesn't happen. So if an asteroid, if an asteroid hits a planet somewhere that had that didn't involve any sentient life, and it didn't have to happen, but it happened anyway, is that negativity? No, there'd be no negativity there. But it, it was unnecessary. If but it was no, unnecessary. Well, no. If there was no life involved, though, it wouldn't be negative. So anything that involves life that is unnecessary is negativity. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So self-replicating um, cells that don't necessarily need to self-replicate that do anyway, that's negativity. No neurons. When it starts to feel ouch, feel pain. When it starts to feel pain, it's negative. Okay. So now you're now it's a different definition. Okay. So no, it's not a different definition. It's the same definition. Well, all I'm saying is that things, the, the necessity of something relates, negative. the necessity of something that relates to relates to a lot of things. There are a lot of things in the world that can be classified as necessary and unnecessary. Okay. The fact that something is necessary or unnecessary doesn't tell you if it's negative or positive. Now okay. you can, some things that are unnecessary can that be sucks. negative or positive. Oh and my some God. things that are unnecessary. You suck. Right? <laughs> Hold on. Just, you have to focus for a second. Okay. So unnecessary pain is unnecessary. It's just to establish what is the problem with, with existing in the first place, okay? So if it doesn't have to happen, then there's no- Okay, and, and the point of metaethics is how, is how, what is your founding and how do you know that these things are bad, these things are negative? Yeah, trying to self-define it by necessary. You know what science is, which is ultimately just working back. Mm -hmm. okay? it's, not, it's working back to a point, right? Is it not? Yeah, it's working back to a point. And how do you know that point is justified? Because we know that pain is bad. We know that. How pain do you is know bad. that pain is bad? A uh, thing. How do you know that pain is bad? Because unnecessary pain is unnecessary. How and is some, the fact that something is unnecessary mean make it bad? Yeah, when you come into existence. Okay, wait, place, wait. So, so, and so, every just to be clear, that everything that is unnecessary is bad. Dude, oh, everything is unnecessary crazy. bad. It's insane. I mean, it's it's just like. Have you been watching this? Yeah. I mean, how often has he been talking over me? A lot. A lot. She says a lot. Dude, it's been preposterous. As if you me. haven't been talking over me, we can have to do a recap of the video if you'd like and see who over talks who. But honestly, yeah, I mean, I'm, I, I'm, I'm trying to get you to answer the question. Is everything that is unnecessary necessarily bad? Uh that's not the initial argument. The initial argument is that coming into existence is always a serious harm and not coming into existence is okay, simply- Okay, then that's serious. begging the question because how do you know it's coming into existence- over me at the end of it and just shut up for a second. Coming into existence is always a serious harm and not coming into existence is simply not a serious harm. Okay, so pain is bad. So unnecessary pain is, is unnecessary. And so like death, would be unnecessary. You wouldn't have to have that. Wouldn't have to happen if you do this. Then you create infinity vegans. There's no chance for them to holocaust animals. Okay. Okay. So, so is the fact that something is unnecessary make it bad? Dude, that's not the argument. How do you know that something no, being unnecessary is bad? Man. That's not an argument. Okay. Well, how do you know? How do you know that argument unnecessary that pain is bad? Is that how do you know unnecessary yeah. pain is bad? Yeah. Do you want to die? 
Do you know? Have you ever heard that? Before? Does the fact that I want to die make it bad? I don't want to die, but I can't prove that otherwise, it's objectively bad. Otherwise, yeah, you can't prove that. You can't prove whether it's objectively With bad. Again, so you can't no, prove can't. whether or not the murderer is the murderer. You can't prove whether or not evolution is true or not based on your logic right now. You can't prove whether or not evolution is true or not. You can't pr prove whether or not a murderer is a murderer based on your logic. You can't prove whether or not, I don't know, anything else that we have empirical ev evidence for. You are a subjectivist twat and a yeah. subjectivist so what the point of the founding, point of the founding, not making any point sort of our video, rational discord whatsoever. The, the, right? point so you're saying ethical, the point of meta-ethical discourse was is the founding of what we know and how we, could we know if anything with certainty is real or with any degree of certainty is real. And that was what we were discussing. Now I'm going to redirect can, again. No, we can be more, we can okay, be so more we know? sure than unsure. How can we? Because we, can, because we can be more sure than unsure. How do we know? How do we know that we could be more sure than unsure? How do we know that we could be more sure than unsure? Observations of the world. How do we know that evidence makes us more sure than unsure? How do we know a murderer is a murderer based on evidence? How do we know that the observational evidence makes us more sure than unsure? How do we know evolution is true? How do we know that the observational evidence makes it more true than untrue? Yeah, I'm talking. I'm the one talking over you. Yeah, sure. How how do we know? If you dodge, if you dodge the question, I will cut in. How do we know that the observational evidence? Makes you it more true than untrue. Asshole. You're How saying do we unnecessary. Know? You're you're How asking do we know? a straw man argument. About, How do we know that the so evidence makes it more like true what? than untrue? You want me to say pinpricks though? Oh yes, pinpricks are. They're not bad. Is that what you want to say? How do we know that the so observational evidence watch? makes so it more ne more necessary true than untrue? Is that what you're How saying? We that? Well, that's not the argument, douchebag. The argument How is that coming into existence is always a serious harm. How do we know coming into existence? Coming into existence is always a serious harm. And not how do we know that the observational? I can't mute him. Coming into how existence. How do we know that the observational evidence? Why can't I mute makes you? It necessarily so harm. Shut the fuck up. How do we know that observational coming evidence? Makes it always a serious harm. Not coming into. How existence. do we know that observational that evidence? That is the argument. At how hand. do we know that observational evidence makes it more likely true than not true? How do we know that observational evidence makes it more likely true than not true? Yeah. That question yeah. answers itself. The evidence that's there answers itself. If there's evidence for a murderer being a murderer, we convict the murderer. If How do you know that that's evidence for the murderer being a murderer? We understand that evolution is true. How do you know that that's evidence for the murderer being a murderer? Because it's... I mean, doesn't anyone see how stupid the question that he just asked me was? I mean, you surely you guys have to see how silly and how much of a silly asshole this type of shit is, this subjectivist shit. You'd have to start saying we can't convict murderers. We can't know whether evolution is true. Straw man arguments. Logical fallacy straw man arguments. No, they're not fucking straw man arguments. You're making straw man arguments. I'm I asked a question. You, questions are, an ar are questions arguments? I asked a question. A question is not an argument. How yeah, do you know uh, that the evidence for that the evidence for a murderer is I've valid? It a bunch of times. How do you know the evidence is valid? It answers itself. The evidence. Are you saying it's self-evident? If there's no, there's things that are evident about that uh, topic that are. And how con confident are you in the evidence? How do you know that you can be confident in the evidence? You can be confident in the evidence because the evidence piles up. It's, you know, when there's evidence for something. How can you, you be confident in the piling up of the evidence? Because you have axioms, base axioms that you might have okay. to assume. Yeah, you okay. might have to assume Good. that. Great job. Good. Great so job. The Great job, yeah. dude. You might have to, well, yes, you have to assume determinism. Yes. In order to figure out all of physics. Wait, wait. In order to figure out all. Yeah. You have, you have to assume determinism. Yeah, if you want to do that, you have to assume determinism about, to figure out all of physics, to figure out all of evolution. I'm talking about assuming any, I'm talking about assuming logic. Without any sort of subjectivist shit. If we followed what you're saying right now, we wouldn't be able to figure out evolution. We wouldn't be able straw to Straw man out argument. Out. Logical fallacy straw man argument. No, it's true. If yep. we follow nope, what that's not what I'm that's not what I'm saying. If we do assume it, if we do accept the axioms to be true. No, for certain. We do accept the axioms to be true. We have to make then, assumptions initially in our base yeah, axioms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Great job. Good job. That's what that's I've been the, saying all the whole time, the idiot. So, that, so this was this was the point of our video. So what do you disagree with in our video? Because you guys aren't discussing this shit in depth. You were wrong in other videos. So so wait, wait, wait. So just to be clear, just to be clear. So just to be clear, you don't disagree with us in this I, video? I responded to two minutes of that video when you guys joined my channel, Jim. Yeah, you were mentioning things you disagreed with. So what do you disagree with yeah. in that video? And what I disagreed with in that video was the shit that you fucking were spewing about, uh, you know, 
positive and negative rights and all that shit. We positive weren't talking about positive and negative positive. rights in that video. Yeah, listen, you're talking about moral stuff, all right? And we were talking no about moral. meta ethics. We were listen, talking about meta ethics. Every time you use the word moral, you're fucking wrong. We were talking that? about There's, meta listen, ethics. Every not normative thing. theory. You, you use the word moral. You are wrong. The title of your video you was why? lots. The you title of your why? video. The you title of why? your video. Do you understand was why? Every, you said the word moral in the debate. You said the, the word title moral of your video. video. The title the of your video was video. lots every of fails. Every single time. Listen. Every your video single time. Was lots of fails. So tell me what you disagreed with. The title of your video was lots of fails. So tell me all the lots of fails that were in the video. Okay, that's what we're getting at, and that's what I've been doing this whole time, actually. So what are the lots of fails that were in the video? Moral. Every time you mm -hmm. use the term moral, okay, and you discuss the term moral, so if you ask somebody- It's how we, it's how we know our moral, gra it's how we know the nature of our okay. moral grounding and what it is. That's meta ethics. Yeah, okay, so great. Yeah, you have to assume a base axiom that then, but certain okay, axioms- so do you disagree Can we agree on this? Can we agree on this? Certain axioms build, listen, certain axioms build things and other axioms mm -hmm. don't build them. There are things that, yep, there are relators and operators of of meta of, of normative systems as, as structured as a base axiom. Now, what do you just, so that's what we were talking about in our video. So now that you said our video had lots of fails, what in that video that had lots of fails, what do you disagree with? The fails initially with mm -hmm. using, anytime you use the word moral, okay? You're saying, you're talking about the individual. All right, and the individual doesn't build. Okay, so we're gonna go. That's that. We're gonna go back to the Stanford Encyclopedia Dictionary or the IEP for morals and how it not necessarily applies, and if it necessarily yeah. applies to the individual. Have that or not. We've already done this before. Okay, we've already been over right. this. Obviously. We what what is what is wrong by saying the word moral in, in as it relates to how we know the founding of our morals? Okay, so systems make ethics and then ethics make other ethics it's not the it doesn't happen in the way that like someone just observes something and has a thought i'm sorry i'm sorry it doesn't happen in the way that someone has a thought first and then the about the information and then the information that's not how it happens it happens with the information has to be there first right so you you can't just have an individual making their own moral system. No, it's made by ethics that are around them, that are influencing that moral system. An it's individual can structure a moral, system, a moral system based on their base system. axiom? Okay, it's an ethical system. So an individual cannot structure a, a moral system or ethical system? By themselves completely without information yeah. first? If they have a certain axiom, if, if I as an individual say- No, 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 I'm I, saying without any information. So they can't do it without, without oh you're talking about a priori not a priori of without with from nothing from before yeah, before from nothing, existing yeah. Can they have it from oh, okay. nothing? yeah no. so basically and basically we're making fun of the term a priori too so what do you disagree with in our yeah. video i don't disagree with that I, the only so thing what I do you disagree with in our video fuck the only thing i disagree with listen is using you said lots of moral. fails yeah using the term moral every time mm -hmm. you said the word moral you're mm -hmm. failing how every time. how because ethics and morals are completely freaking separate things and ethics okay. build other ethics it's not morals building it's not people that can have thoughts about information that they don't have is it it's people that are having the information first and then being shown that information and then they can have the thoughts about the information do you That's deny moral axioms can be structured no ethical axioms can be established moral axioms can't be established they're subjective just like so moral oh wait so so the fact that they cannot be structured is because they are subjective because ethics builds other ethics right yeah more more moral axioms don't don't uh, construct uh, uh branch into other uh relators and operators based on unless, what the axiom is unless you think you can have thoughts about information that you don't have which obviously you can't do. You're well, not no, we, we assume if you, you assume a moral axiom. So let's say I assume that I would like the well-being to suffering ratio to be optimized as a consequentialist would. I think yeah. that's bootstrapped as an axiom as an individual. Are there relators and operators that logically follow from that system? Uh, say that one more time. You lagged. It sucks. Okay. You so lagged. let's say I as an individual bootstrap a moral axiom. Let's say it's mm -hmm. consequentialism that well-being and suffering ought to be optimized. The question is, are there relators and operators that follow from that statement? Does yeah. it, do logical things, okay, so then it's a system. 
Yeah, and it's, it's a moral system. system. Then yeah, it is a moral. System. There's no such thing as moral systems. Morals well, you are just said, <laughs> individuals. Morals <laughs> are built, built on okay, individuals. Okay, let's start from the beginning. Again. Do you deny the existence of moral axioms? No, there are ethical axioms. Okay. So do not you moral not... axioms. There's no such thing. Morals are stupid, dude. They were built by religions and things. Okay. They are preposterous. Ethics are what build other ethics, and those how, the way that those ethics are established are what builds those ethics. No one talks about veganism without comparing things like uh, when they're trying to persuade people like, you know, uh, with other information, right, that they, that they have, that those people don't have. Like dogs, obviously a dog is, why are they consistent with a dog not being holocausted for its meat? And they're consistent with a pig being holocausted for its meat. What's the difference between the dog and the pig? Those are ethical arguments. These are systems that we already have in place that we're making to establish other ethics. So there's no morals, there's ethics that establish other ethics, unless you think you can have thoughts about information that you don't have. So you shouldn't have to assume that humans have moral value. If they came into existence, they have ethical value based on the fact that pain is bad. And pain is bad because of evolution. And evolution is true because of embryonic development, homogenous genes, et cetera, and so forth. Okay, okay. down the list. So you're, I th you're confusing, in, in right now you're confusing in uh, is for an ought. So the fact that pain exists in evolution. Well, there's no confusion here. Go okay, ahead. so you said, you said that pain exists in evolution, so that's a physical fact, yes. right? Okay, does the fact that pain exists in evolution mean, does it follow from that, that it, pain ought not exist? when it doesn't have to in the first place okay so that's so if something yeah. doesn't have okay so how do you know that because mars you think about mars because or anyone mars? Has no sense of life okay anyway, so you know that so pain that doesn't exists. have to exist ought not exist because yeah. mars because all right so look we'll use this one okay so look at inside this do you see any sentient life inside this bottle right now uh not that i know of okay so do you think that there's negativity happening in this bottle right here? Uh, it depends how you define negativity. <laughs> it depends on your... It depends there's no on your, sentient life to experience it. All right, so there's no sentient life to experience the negativity that's in this bottle. That would be no, in this bottle. I, would, I would say that would be correct. Yeah, so there's no negativity in the bottle, right? Mm -hmm. Great. Well, no, if you define negativity as, as a sentient being, if you define negativity as a sentient being experiencing negati negativity or so, for example, like, a, so if, if someone wants to define negativity as the lack of sentience experiencing well-being, they would say there is negativity in that bottle. Well, I'm no. Well, I'm, so I'm, it depends I'm, how you define it. Do you understand what I'm saying? I, okay. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. So pain is the negativity I'm talking about. There's no pain in this bottle, right? Yeah. So you're, you're saying negativity is defined as as the lack as pain pain yeah. unnecessary pain so if someone were to say to you well negativity is defined as the lack of well-being then they would look at the bottle and say that there is negativity no okay so well yeah, be that's so what they would uh, yeah i know that they would but okay so yeah so it's just based on how you're defining it Okay, yes, but now let's define well-being. It's not just based on how we're defining it. So let's define well-being. So, so, so just before, before we go into that, before we go into it, now I, wanna, I, I don't want to get off topic because the point is that you said we were failing every time we were using morals. Yes, and, you are. And, it se and, and that would entail the denial of moral axioms because if you structure no. something. No, 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 no. I said ethical axioms. You could go back in the recording. Ethical, okay, so, so, what do you, so, what do, so if I say I have a moral axiom, what do I mean? You mean that you have an individual axiom that you can build w without fucking any influences from the outside world? It's preposterous. No, There's that's no not what I'm, I'm saying. I'm saying as an individual, I structure this. Morals mean, dude. They're based on the individual. They're based on personal choice. Yeah, but that doesn't mean it's in. Yeah, it's an individual, but that doesn't. It doesn't. Yeah, so nothing in your definition. Nothing in that. that nothing in the definition <laughs> entailed a priori. Have thoughts about information that they don't have. Is there anything in the definition that entailed a priori? Uh, yeah, it's, 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 what in the okay, would you like to go look up the definition of moral? You would have to have omnipotence in order to be able to individually have information without, ha uh, without first did getting anything, access to that information. Anything within you. that definition of morals necessitate a priori, a, an a priori nature of morality. I really have to piss, I'm exploding. I have to go to the bathroom.
Okay, have fun. I'll be right back. Okay. Um, well, I guess, does anyone have any questions in the chat while we uh, wait for him to finish his urination? Right, I'm back. Oh, Never mind. So All right, good. Excellent. So, yeah, okay. so, so I just looked up the definition so, of morality in Stanford Encyclopedia, yeah. and uh, morality can be used as either one, describe or refer to certain codes of conduct put forth by society or a group, or accepted by an individual, or accepted by an individual for no. their own behavior. That is the definition in the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy. Okay, so how were we failing when we were using the word morality? Yeah, uh, well, that's just a really, any, anything to do with the individual. I mean, the Stanford definition. Yeah, it relates to society or a group or accepted by an individual for their own behavior. So how are we failing when we were using the word morality? Okay, well, that's the wrong definition based on what it's I was It's the wrong talking. definition. That's the play. This is from the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy. That's the definition from the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy. How is that the wrong definition? Based on all of the, uh, you know, based on law, law uses. Based on law? Where we're talking about philosophy and we're just talking yeah, about. Laws, sorry, dude, wait, sorry, laws are study of more established than, uh, you know, the Stanford Encyclopedia. In philosophy, law is more, in philosophy, <laughs> the definitions we're working with are important. And the yeah. sources that we're looking for is a philosophical source to describe morality. I'm using the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy, which is, and, and what, what are you using? What are you using as relating to, as a philosophical source? That, Why do you think that the individual exists in the form of if they can have thoughts about information that they don't have is what we really should be asking you. How, where do you think that a person can have thoughts about information that they don't have? Red herring. How does that, what does that have to do with anything? Well, they can't. There's no individual. Yeah, what, what, what does that have to do with anything? Thoughts. So what does that have to do? That's your. What does that necessitate a priori? What do you? Why? How is? How is the word morality necessitate a priori knowledge? The what the terms that they use for all of litigious society, all of the system of law, and you're discussing what they're fucking using for some sort of fucking philosophy. I mean, we're having a philosophical. You're just silly. It's just silly. It's just philosophical conversation. It's silly. We made a video what? discussing Changing philosophy like morals and, ethics and we were really talking about really morals as, as they relate to the philosophical definition. This was a okay. philosophical conversation. So where right? were the lots of fails in our video? Every time you use the word morals and it's defined okay. as- so it's defined it's as descriptively to refer to certain codes or conduct put forward by a society or group or accepted by an individual choice. for their own behavior. So Do you think that people can establish where? facts based on personal choice? Do I can can I establish facts based on personal choice? Yes, based on personal choice. I, it's the fact that I personally decided to do something. In that sense, it's a fact. But other than that, no, I don't it's see. Not. Yeah, there's so no it, re it would relate if you'd have to be able again. to listen. You'd have to so you, have, 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 have,
So you again, according if you're talking about the correspondence theory of truth, if you're oh, talking man, about the correspondence theory, really sucks. Not being able to mute you really sucks. So if we're talking about the correspondence theory of truth, then the answer to that would be no, unless we're strictly speaking about the fact that I choose to do something is a fact in and of itself. But okay. if we're talking about the co if we're talking about the coherence theory of truth, then what I would say is that if something is true in respect to which it comports to my axioms, someone can structure a moral axiom and say, well, it's true with respect to it comporting with my moral axioms. So where was the fail in the video? Every single time you say the word moral, you're- How is that a fail? Based on all of litigious society and what lawyers ultimately use, if they're being okay. a logically consistent lawyer. So, so we're, 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 we're having a philosophical conversation. We were not having a conversation on case law. So the, when we were having a philosophical conversation, we were working among the definition of, of well, morality of based you? on the, I mean, which one do you think we should, would actually change more people's lives and more, would, would make We more were not people. talking about what will change people's lives. We were having a conversation. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, we I'm talking about what will change people's lives. Logical fallacy, non sequitur. Logical you, fallacy, non sequitur. You're, no, you're, no, it's not a non sequitur at all. Yep. No. It has nothing yeah, to do with, not with the relevance of the discussion. No, dude, we just didn't have our so, definitions straight. So, and, so again, you know, so how, we were taught we were having a philosophical conversa conversation. Yeah. We use definitions that are established in philosophy not definitions that are maybe established in case law because we were not having a law conversation. We're not discussing case law. We were discussing philosophy. Therefore, no. when we use the word morality, we were using the established definition of morality. This is from the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy, descriptively to refer to certain codes of conduct or put forward by a society or group or morality. accepted by an individual for their own behavior. You're using the wrong definition. I actually just realized this. Okay, Google so the, here's, the def here's the definition not, of morality. Not, Google morals, not morality. Morals. Okay. okay. Morals. Yeah. Normative. Okay. Google well, from the Stanford Encyclopedia. Moral. Moral is the thing. Moral. Concerned with the principles of right and wrong behavior, and the goodness no, or badness of human character. Moral reasoning is just is is individual or collective practical reasoning. Where where is this? Ha where I'm, I'm not seeing it. It's right here. I'll just read it to you. Right no, I, I understand you 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 have a. Hold on, it's just just so the people can reasoning. see. Reasoning. No, you look, told me to look up moral, not moral reasoning. Yeah, moral don't reasoning, whatever. And Stanford. No, 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 no. Don't 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 be a sophist about this. What do you mean? I'm moral, not being a sophist. Moral, about any when you stuff, no, dude, no, I've no. been a sophist this whole time. I'm not but you look, told me to look up the word moral. You're taught, now you're taught, giving me moral reasoning. We can go through that, but I'm not seeing the but where this needs to land is I'm not seeing how we were failing when we were using the word moral. Every single time you say the word moral, you are utterly failing because wow. ethics is the only argument upon which you build anything else. Oh on. my God, you're so to sound. Look at this. Moral reasoning is individual or collective practical yeah, reasoning. Collective. I actually or, I read that to you just now. I read so it. you said you were trying to make a distinction between the individual and something, and and, no, and something I is not the individual. Your own no. definition, your own definition is telling you the exact opposite of what you've been claiming, even in moral reasoning. No, yes, I'm not. How are we failing? Find anything like that? I'm just saying. How are we failing? It, this is all the philosophy stuff. So this is like morally one ought to do. So it's obviously ought to do. So it's based on the individual. That's what they're saying, even in the first sentence. Morally one ought to do. I mean, come yeah, on. What, what one or more than one ought to do? Is That's what in the definition. Yeah. No, there's is's that you can then have oughts about. And the is's are mm -hmm. ethics. And they, they have yeah. to come first before the, the, the individual can have thoughts about them. The, mor the morals are this, this what one ought to do. So how are we failing? Yeah, we were talking it, about the, the meta-ethical meta foundings about what we ought to do. You don't think that there's is's? I think there's is's and yeah, I, I think okay. so. And the is's are the I accept it based, it based on the based on based on the its comportion with my axiom. I accept that there are is's to the extent that my axiom. Stanford, is. Why are we using the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy next to uh, what law should be? I mean, you guys we're just, using because we're having a philosophical conversation yeah, you know because we're having a philosophical conversation. We're going to use the definitions that comport you guys with are the brutally wrong on that subject. And we are going to use the we're going to use the, well, going to well, use the well, definitions Definitions that comport with philosophy. Okay, great. So yeah, we can use the definitions that comport with philosophy. The Stanford yep. Encyclopedia of Philosophy is wrong. Yes. 
It's it's wrong. So uh, okay, well that's well. How are you saying that it is it is wrong? This is it's established. What uh, ought like, to do? It's so you think that you ought to do something based on an is though? Okay, so the is. No, nope, that's not. Where does it say that in the Stanford Encyclopedia? In the first sentence, it says, "Look, moral it's reasoning is it's so, describing no, what it is. It's this is individual a or collective definition. practical Hold reasoning. On. Listen, settle down. Which stupid. relates about what morally we ought to do." That's what it is. It's not saying we're deriving it is from. I want to show it's that you describing. Viewers can not, see what the point is. Not what it says. It's right, you're gonna have to stop talking for a minute so that I can show the it, viewers it, what it we're does, actually reading. It does not derive. You're gonna have to stop talking for just a minute. Can you do that? I know that's hard. Explain to me how an is is being derived from an ought. Okay, great. All right. So. Moral reasoning is individual or collective practical reasoning about what morally one ought to do. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so where is the right. is coming? So where is an is being derived from an ought? I mean, okay. where, where is an ought being derived from an is? Okay, so you can't have thoughts about information that you don't have, all right? So you have to be able to have is's to have oughts about those is's. So this is stupid. The first sentence is stupid as fuck. Why, why, wait, why is, why, is why is it stupid? Why is what it just said? Based on what I just said, were you not listening? You can't. You can't have thoughts with without ises. What does that have to do with relate to the stupidity of the, or intelligibility of the sentence? The the sentence is stupid. Look, why is the says, sentence stupid? It says that you what you ought to do. Look, moral reasoning is individual or collective practical mm -hmm. reasoning about what morally one, one, ought, one to ought to do. All right. Yeah. So it, what? It's not built on ises. You don't it think could it be, or it doesn't say whether it is or isn't. It doesn't say whether it doesn't make a claim on the matter. Yeah, it doesn't make any claim at all. That's why it's yeah. stupid. Yeah. So what? 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 <laughs> it's just to find out everything has to make a claim on the founding of it. No, it's just a oh, yes. definition of what, no, the, what the word means. Oh yes, it does. If there's oh, it if it exists, if the claim exists based on it empirical evidence, the, it can tell you the nature of what what it is by definition, and it doesn't if have the to claim say exists. Does not have to say where it comes. No, it does not have to say where it comes from. No, not at all. If the claim exists based on empirical yeah. evidence. If the claim, it doesn't have to say, look, the definition of a claim, whether it's a stupid or intelligible definition, doesn't depend on if there is evidence for that claim. You understand? The definition of something is just the definition of something. Okay. It's just so basic. So it's a stupid definition because it doesn't yes, have You're just saying it's a stupid, this is what it's accepted to be. There are certain definitions that are accepted to be just certain definitions. Okay, the, it doesn't. It, the the well, relator, the relator of something, how it, how, no, how the is the true value of, a, of whether a claim okay. is true or false doesn't depend Great on the definition of something. Or not. The All right, good is, job, artist. Good job. The definition is just the definition. Definition so, so important. To how you. so again? How the reality is, is this definition isn't so, even defined. So how and we're discussing it absolutely is the not. We're discussing Moral, something. It's listen, defined. We're Would discussing you like something that isn't defined. Moral reasoning is individual or collective practical and reasoning so about I'm what trying to show and why to it's not defined the same. So and how is that not defined? Is -is. There's ises that Moral, build oughts. If you Moral think, reasoning don't is think that ises build oughts. Collective or practical reasoning. Don't think that ises build ots, then you think that you can have thoughts about it. One wants to do. All right? Okay. So that how is that related to how it's a stupid definition? Because you can't have thoughts about information that you don't have. Therefore? Therefore, you need an is, an, an piece of information to have that freaking thought. Therefore, so it's a stupid how does, what does that have to do with the, with the definition Look, of the research? Just because, just because, it, just because working have. within... Just because working we, within the relator and operator, just because working within the relator and operator necessitates it's certain really is does not mean the definition of it is itself is stupid. What people use as law is that morals are individuals that come down to personal compasses, okay? And the, ultimately built on your personal compass, your personal choice. That's in law, in all of litigious society. There's over a million practicing lawyers in the United States that all okay, we were not having a discussion about case law. you want to use some jackass? We were, we were not having a discussion about case law. We were having a discussion about philosophy. Can you tell me, can you tell me, we were having a discussion about philosophy, not about case law. So Listen, can you tell me no, what we, we were, what all the fails were, actually. what what were we what? A lot of me, we were no. in that video. No, we were we discussing a lot in of that cases. video. In that video, we were discussing philosophy. We were using philosophical definitions. We we're using definitions established within philosophy. You're trying to pit, you're trying to say we should have used case law. So can you tell me what the fail? Can you tell me? 
Can he you points tell all me the what steps all the fails were in that video? Is that I'm making some Can sort of fail? Tell me I'm what all the fails, fails were in that video. Pay attention. It is a okay, fail. I'll read it again and explain it to fail. you again, okay? Moral reasoning is individual or collective practical reasoning about what morally one ought to do, okay? Mm -hmm. Yep. To do. Based on what, okay? Can you have thoughts about information that you don't have? Or is it just a collective, Therefore, collective practical reasoning? This is even more stupid. So this is an appeal to popularity. No, listen, this is an appeal to popularity. So collective practical reasoning is an appeal to popularity. So based on what? It's based on nothing. It doesn't say if one ought to do something or not. It's silly as fuck. It's silly as fuck. You can't have thoughts about information that you don't have. You have to have the fact that pain is bad to build the fucking arguments for veganism for anything that you build it on, dumbass. Okay. And you're saying, no, I can have thoughts about information that I don't have. Yes. My name's Dr. Avi. Ooh, yes. No, wait, hold on. Okay. I can't so have thoughts about information that I don't have. And that's because you have to have an is first in order to have the ought about the is, dumbass. Okay, and so they're dumbasses the too. So you're citing a bunch of dumbasses. So the, the definition of it doesn't claim the definition. <laughs> I'm not just claim definition. Uh, what see, the, look at I can smile. What the smile. Is, is look at over here, my smiley come. smile. Look at my distracted distract. Oh yes, it's so relevant to the topic. Wait, no, it's not, dickhead. You can't have an is without you can't. I'm sorry, you can't have a fucking ought without an is to have the ought about. So. What the fuck okay. are you talking about? Okay, so <laughs> basically, the ought, is, nothing in the definition is being claimed that the ought need to, or what the is is that the ought to derive from. It's just saying yes, what the ought. Yes, it is, dumbass. No, it's not. So where, where is- reasoning is individual or collective mm -hmm. practical yep. reasoning about yep. what morally one ought to do. Yeah. yeah, what morally one ought to do. That's just the definition right. of what Based morally what? one ought to do. Based on what? So it's saying, it's saying, it's it? saying moral know? reasoning is reasoning about what moral- Moral do you reasoning. Think came up with is reason or do you think moral that, reasoning do you think is reasoning about one reason, one practical ought to reasoning? Do, what, do you think that practical do? reasoning by itself, just collective practical reasoning, <laughs> makes something true? What? Do you think that this word? Do you think that this collective practical reasoning makes something true? No, it's not it's claiming not to be true. Do you understand? It's just yeah, what it is. It's not claiming it's not to be claiming true. It to exactly. be true. And I am claiming that the definition exists. doesn't claim something to be it's true. Do you understand that? Coming into existence. Remember, Avi? Hey, there's no there's pain a, inside the bottle. Oh Why is there no pain? You had a really hard time with this one, remember? Why is there no pain inside the bottle? You thought there was negativity okay. in the fucking bottle initially, dumbass. Oh there's no God. fucking negativity okay. inside the bottle. There's okay, no negativity so, in the bottle because so it comes when if it something, negativity if something happens, happens when it comes into existence so, in the first place. Okay, what pain doesn't have to happen in the first place when there's no uh, when there's no reason for that pain to happen, Avi? Right? Okay. okay. So if something, so so if something, look, is I have defined, to shout because you won't even mean. let me your stupid ass. And define the fucking things that I'm saying. You won't even let me define the fucking things that I'm saying. So I'm if something is heavily defined, already, you've been bitch slapped in this fucking debate. So if something is defined, it doesn't. The definition of something that is just being defined doesn't make a claim if it exists or not, or if it exists independent of things or not. It's not that's not making a statement. Do you understand the difference? Okay. So do you understand the difference between something that is defined and something that is claimed to be true by the nature of what the ises are. You are not using an is to establish the ought. You are using an ought to just establish the is, which is silly. It's doing neither of those things. It's just saying what what is something defined to be. An is from an is. It's not defining from an is from an ought or an ought from an is. It's just saying this is this. Moral, moral reasoning is reasoning about what things what what beings individuals ought to do it's just an is from an is it's just defining it's a self definition thing it's not exactly. saying that would it that yeah, and exactly. this is and this is the definition that's proven because of what the oughts are and these are so it's just saying this is trait? this listen so why would you start out with name the trait with 
we have to assume that humans have moral value when we don't. They, they, we know. Where, where was this statement? We have to assume humans have moral value in the video that we made. Where is the statement? Where can you give me a timestamp? Shut the fuck up, dude. Can you give me a timestamp in the video? All you do is talk over me. Can, can you shut up? Shut the fuck up. You're dumb as fuck. Get corrected, all right? You didn't you even give know me a that fucking bottle was fucking not negative. You thought there was pain and negativity inside of this bottle. There's absolutely logical fallacies in the from that argument. You're a complete philosophical dupe and a dumb an argument. Okay, and so is ask yourself, dumbass. So you're all again. dumbasses. Every one of you is a dumbass. You think you can have thoughts about information that you don't have. And that's why you say the word moral over and over and over again. And even this stupid fucking Stanford Encyclopedia philosophy definition is fucking stupid ass rubbish. It's not built on an is, it's built on an ought. What the fuck is that shit? It's a, it's it's a defined term. It's is to it's build defined, an ought. It and is unless, a you think, unless you think you can have thoughts about information that you don't have, which is ultimately what you're pretentious. Okay, I'm going to turn my ass. microphone up now Shut because I have a better microphone than you. Pretentious fucking. So eventually, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. I'm going to ask you where in our video, where in our video did we say we have to assume uh, human moral value in the video that you were making a response to. That's question number one. That's the basis of and Ask then, Yourself's whole fucking and argument. Then, no, that's not the question I asked trait. you. So the question it's I asked you wasn't it's name the trait. The whole argument name the trait. The question Shut I the asked fuck you. Up, you question I asked you. Fucking prick. The Get question I asked you was where in the video that we made. Times in a row, I know I, I have a better mic than you. It's not going to work. I'm turning the game all the way up on my mute by my blue yeti. I got that. Dumbass. Get fucking corrected. Get fucking corrected. Get Fuck and so, corrected. I'm not discussing time. about fuck the actual videos that fuck previously. You. You I was discussing about the brick. moral uh, you're video, the meta ethical video wrong. that you we know made. You're fucking wrong. Okay? So and I've where shown you give me how you're fucking wrong, video, and all you can do is get autistic as fuck about and the, then the other thing I wanted definitions to of something. That definitions Shut the fuck up. That's the appeal to fucking definitions, dumb fuck. That it, you think that somebody can fucking just appeal to definitions so, all fucking and there's day a difference long between because you're a stupid fucking asshole there's and you've never learned a single fucking thing about how to make it is. That's just as my definition to be. You're a fucking dumb fuck, another slave to a fucking stupid ass machine. You're a slave to a stupid fucking machine. Okay. That's what you fucking are. So do you understand those two differences? Stupid fucking machine. Do you understand the difference You're another between dumb that fuck. It's something that is that he can have thoughts about information that he doesn't even fucking have. You're do you another pretentious, useless fucking drug salesman, dumb fuck. Get fucked, idiot. You are a dumbass selling fucking drugs for a fucking pharmaceutical company along with every other fucking useless, philosophically devoid Dumbass, appeal to fucking definitions, autist, stupid ass slave to a fucking industry that doesn't help anybody in the in the long run. Okay, it might help you in the in terms of like it might make certain things less bad with drugs. Okay, but ultimately it doesn't make anything less bad when compared to not coming into existence in the fucking first place. Okay, so what I am saying is articulate. It's perfectly fucking rational to say that there's no pain happening in this bottle right now. So why, Avi, do you think that pain needs to happen? It's because you're a sadistic, megalomaniacal fucking moron. You're another dumbass on this fucking planet that wants to fucking, you know, just assert their pretentious stupidity on everybody else. Fuck you and your stupid fucking definitions. Yeah, get okay. slapped across the I, fucking- I love you, buddy. Fuck I you. love you, buddy, my dude. I love you. Listen. Fuck you. All right. I love you, buddy. And, and pro fucking this shit is over. All right? It's all over. right. Take care. I love you. Yeah. <laughs> Keep watching like you fucking do. I'm not going to watch you, dumbass. I can't learn I love, anything from you. I love you, buddy. What the fuck are you talking about? I didn't learn a single fucking thing from you. I defined all this shit already on my channel hundreds of times before you even had a fucking thought okay. about what to fucking okay. make. Okay. Okay. I love you. Yeah. I love you. I've defined all this shit multiple times. Okay, buddy, my dude. I, okay. A lot. Okay. You think so to, in review, everybody. So Mr. Avi thinks that he can, you know, just have thoughts about information that he doesn't have. That's right? not so what it defined was defined to be. Yeah, no, you, that's, that's not what it was. Thought, defined. 
You think nope. you can have an ought without an is. Was, that's not what it was, the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy defined it to, to oh, be. Oh, here we go. Here we that's go. not what the Stanford Encyclopedia uh, definition is. Look at me. I like that's to That's not jabber. what the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy's definition necessitated. It did not make a claim one way or the other, just to find one thing to be another. Is he getting fucked up? Yeah. You're getting fucked up, dude. Huh. Okay, buddy. I done. She's even smarter than you. Way right. smarter. And she corrects me a lot of the times, too. She's way smarter than you. Okay. And we fuck. I would never fuck you. <laughs> You're afraid. And I know you probably like that sort of thing. All right, but I don't. I don't want any of that. I don't want anything to do with that shit. All right. You can you and ask yourself can be butt friends all day. Well, I, I, I just would want you to have the least bad day that you can possibly have. Yeah, exactly. That's why that's what my articulations do. I would I just want you to have the least bad day and have the least bad month and have the that's, least bad year. That's what my arguments least, do. And have the least bad lifetime. That's what my arguments do. They make you have the least bad day as you possibly can. If you don't come into existence in the first place, you never fucking have any problems. Yep. Yeah. All right. So all why right. the fuck would you bring people into existence right. in order to make all the problems? Right. Oh, so I, just I, satisfy I, Obvious megalomania. Yes, his sadistic vicariousness. Oh, yes, he wants that sadistic vicariousness to be a part of everything else. And he wants to bring that pain into existence for no fucking reason. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, fuck yeah. you. Are, are you. Are you good? And fuck you, by the way, too, for okay. doing that. For doing All that. Right. For being such a pretentious. Fuck you for being you. Fuck you. All right, so I'm gonna. I guess I'm gonna go and have the least bad day that uh, I can have. Uh, yeah, I don't thank you for reproduce, or else you'll create thank a. You process for, uh, thank you for uh, having me on and having this discussion, and yeah. uh, I and uh, I'm going to have go on. And uh, this definitely uh, decreased the amount of bad day that I was having this conversation. So Good. thank you for that. Good. I'm glad. Well, it will, and, and not not only that, but it'll actually re it'll actually make infinity vegans. If they don't, re if you don't reproduce, it makes infinity vegans. And if you reproduce, guess what happens, Avi? There's a chance mm -hmm. for them to not be vegans. Mm -hmm. yep. Isn't that true? Is that a fact? Yep. Okay, good. And yep. you learned that from who? Me. So shut the fuck Thank up. Thank you for Get imparting your knowledge. Yes. I, 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 and I'm doing the right and, fucking and, thing, and, too. And, and, and I can't wait to uh, – I actually come from a, a large family. One of eight, uh, I'm one of eight siblings. And uh, I can't wait to start a family like that on my own and how beautiful it would be. <laughs> yeah, preposterous amount of harm that you'll create. Yep. Yeah, you can't wait to create all I the can't, future. Can't wait to, I can't wait animals. to create beings, buddy, my dude. I'm going to create them. For every <laughs> being that you don't create, Are I'm going to create them. pretentious and vicarious as you? That's a good question. Are they going to be as pretentious and vicarious as you? Is that what you I want? I guess we'll <laughs> just find out, but I hope they're going to have a very, a, a very minimal bad days as they can have as well. Yeah, well, they won't because they'll be existing and therefore they'll mm -hmm. die eventually. So you'll create yep. some people who will die. Yep. I'm going to create I'm going to I'm going to create some babies. That's what you're I'm going to You're fine with killing your future children. I'm fine with creating my future children. Yep. So that they can die. Not so that they can die, so they can experience well being. Well, they will die, right? So they can experience well being. They will die, won't they? Yeah, they will. But they, they can experience. Great, great yeah. job. Okay, so good. So what exactly is the thing that you think that they will be achieving while they come into existence? Will they be getting rid of cancer? They'll be will experiencing. They will, will be experiencing. They will be, they will be experiencing. Cancer? They will be experiencing. Progeny cure cancer, Avi. Would that be a, a net good? You they will be experiencing well-being, buddy, my dude. Well-being? So well-being. Yep. So let's define well-being really quick, all right? Well-being is not the opposite of suffering or not the lack of suffering. Uh, if you want to try to redefine well-being into the lack of suffering, then one can say the opposite around and say that suffering is the absence of well People Google the definitions, dumbass. This is about people, not you, you pretentious fucking prick. Yep. Shut the fuck up for I a know, second. I already know this the antinatalist the definition. definition. Of well -being. When you Google well-being, this is the definition, okay? Mm -hmm. The state or of being comfortable, comfortable. Ha healthy, happy or, happy. or healthy. All right? Yeah, I am great comfortable. Job. All right, so good job. All right, I am great. comfortable, so happy, and healthy right now. How are they going to be purely comfortable? I am where is the instance where they're going to be purely comfortable? I am comfortable, happy, happy, and healthy. Based this, are you this, purely comfortable, healthy, and happy? I am comfortable, happy, and healthy. My net overall comfortability, happiness, and healthfulness is a net positive, and that's what I care about, buddy, my dude. I am happy. Okay. 
All right. Well, no, I'm not your buddy or your dude. All right. So, you're my dude, my buddy. What do you mean you're not my buddy, my dude? Settle down. You're you. Wait, how are you not my buddy, my dude? I thought we were. I thought, I thought, I thought we were getting along. My channel. I don't want you having Wait. hot sex. To ask yourself on my fucking Wait, channel. Hold on. Hold on. Disgusting. Wait. Now, I thought. I, mean, I thought we were. I thought we were having a good time. Well, listen. If you want to do that stuff, it's fine. It's just I don't want that to be a part of this argument. Okay? Wait. 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 Right. Wait, so buddy, I'm, buddy, what am I doing? Being comfortable, healthy, or happy, all right? Yeah, so I, I'm, you really think you mm -hmm. could be purely happy? You think mm -hmm. there's a pure happiness? No, I think there's degrees. I don't think I can be purely tortured either. Exactly. Okay, and do you, so yeah, there's no pure. Could you there's no there, pure happy, is there? There's no pure torture, is there? Yes, there fucking is. There is a really? pure torture. So the max, can you show me a, can you show me, so can you show me the maximal means state of torture? You suffer. It means can you, you can, can die. You it means you me, can be tortured. Can you show me one brain? It means you can be the victim of fucking Jeffrey Can you show me one brain that has the you maximal state of torture in which Jeffrey all the nose receptors are firing and which all of the, all of the integration in the, in the neocortex is, is interpreting it as torture in which all the nociceptors, alpha nociceptors, uh, C-type nociceptors are firing simultaneously. Can you show me the a one brain, one being who's currently experiencing every single nociceptor firing simultaneously? Can you show me that being? What the fuck are you talking? Just you understand what a nociceptor is? Yes, it's a pain. What's a nociceptor? Okay, and do you understand the difference between type alpha type and C-type nociceptors? Yes. What is the difference between an alpha nociceptor and a type C nociceptor? They think that one creates, uh, is, you know, pleasure in the brain. No, none and neither of them yes. create pleasure. Yes, they do. Shut no, up, dude. Don't. We don't know what the fuck. So the difference between an alpha type nociceptor and a type C nociceptor. And no, you this use is actually a, a filtered no, definition. This has a strict definition. Try to establish an argument as opposed yeah. to so fucking using between, philosophy. Use philosophy, dumbass. The difference between. Use philosophy. You want to get difference between a type A nociceptor. Use philosophy then. Don't use There's a difference between a type A nociceptor and a type C. Don't use appeal to definition. One did one does not generate neither of them actually generate you're trying pleasure. To look fucking not... smarter than somebody else because you're a pretentious well, fucking Well, brick. you can just if I'm you just want to tell me less of the bat. I'm trying to make wanna... less of the fucking bat. If and you you're over here me. just trying to look like a smart. I'm so smart. Look at me. I have, I could redefine something when he knows what it is already. When he defines what air theory is, it's ethical fucking nihilism. And when he shows it's why not, it it's is, not and when he nihilism. makes the arguments, when he tries to show the arguments that are on the very thing that he says, no, you don't know what that is. Oh my god, no, no, oh my god, I'm so smart. I'm so fucking smart. Look at how pretentious I am. Oh yes, I'm so fucking smart. When I know some definition, shut the fuck up, you dumbass. Well, well, I'm saying is that you're a useless saying, sack of fucking that's shit. That's you're you're another sentient fucking slime on this fucking planet. That's what you fucking are. You're a sentient slime on this planet. You're the worst kind of fucking slime that exists. You feel pain. Okay, so if you understand the definition, then you should be able to give me the definition. What the fuck are you laughing at, dumbass? You're getting fucking backhanded. Shut up. So, so if you understand the definition, you tell me that you understand... You're the laughing and between causing it. unnecessary pain. That's I so funny. Yeah, causing I unnecessary pain is so okay. funny. I asked you. Ass. I asked you to give me a max. A, a, show me a being who is funny about that. All of their nociceptors firing and integrating within their brain. I asked you for both the type A nociceptors and the type C nociceptors. Can you tell me the difference? I asked you to tell me the difference between what those two are. If you did know, you answered, yes, I do know what they were. I asked you what they were. You said one generates pleasure, one, and that's already no, wrong. because I didn't neither say that. I said one is one they think is yeah. responsible for generating pleasure. No, that's not true. Neither are, neither are thought to be responsible for generating pleasure. Oh, okay. All right. Well, Okay, Fuck so would you like me to yeah. would you like me to you tell you what they mean? Pleasures, you, so, so, seriously, you think that the pleasures justify the harms? Do you want me to explain to you what the difference? Fuck means? off with that sh fucking bullshit! Do you think okay, that the so pleasures type, I can, justify I can, the harms? Do you think can, that the pleasures justify the harms? It's a very simple question. Okay. Yes or no? My my, my yes answer no. is Do you my think that the pleasures yes. justify the harms? Absolutely, buddy, my dude. <laughs> okay, so you think that fucking what an orgasm justifies killing somebody? I think the overall net well-being in all Shut aspects. Shut the fuck up! Do you think that a fucking orgasm justifies killing somebody? One or one orgasm? No, yes. I mean I no, I mean I, but but again, yeah, I don't think one. Why did you do it then and make a fucking human? I don't think I. I, I don't think one. I don't it's think absurd. one. Third, need does not need to exist when you don't come into existence in the first place. 
It's simple. Requirements aren't required. None of the requirements to avoid pain. Do, do you understand how you are picking out? Any fucking thing you do here on planet Earth. Do you dumb, understand? Do you relieve un yourself of fucking genetic material and you think that that's this great fucking pleasurable do, thing. Do you understand you how dumb. you picking out one specific part of well-being and saying to, it's a justified the, all of the all of the suffering that one would experience is just as dishonest as if I were to pick out one specific part of suffering and ask if that is not justified by all the well-being someone would experience. So let's say someone feels uncomfortable one day. I would say, do you think someone feeling uncomfortable with it one day would be so bad that it would not compare to all that it would not trounce all the well-being someone experienced? Do you see how that is how dishonest that is? Obviously, we have to compare the net well-being of someone's entire life to their net suffering in their entire life. Okay, but do you so you would have to think that there could be a pure happy, a pure health. No, 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 we don't. Yes, you fucking would. No, if you I want don't. to accumulate those things, you'd have to say that. And then you just said that you thought that I don't think there wasn't a pure I don't torture. think I need to be a pure state of happiness, just like I don't think I need to I, there needs to be a pure state of torture. And there isn't, by the way. Can no, you show I'm me the pure state of torture? That. I'm saying that you would have to establish a pure happy. Why, pure why would I have to do that? In order to say that you wanted to fucking bring a person into existence to achieve. No, I, I wouldn't have to say that there's a pure. If it doesn't have an end goal, if there's no end goal. So you think that the end goal is well-being, but there's no end goal. There's no pure happiness. It's just you experience happiness. Yeah, well, jackass, that doesn't fucking justify all the pain. That doesn't justify all the debt. That doesn't justify all the misery. That doesn't justify one Jeffrey Dahmer or one child dying of fucking cancer. It doesn't justify a single fucking thing that happens to you based on what you're saying right now okay if you compare if you compare all the well-being experienced by an individual compared to all the suffering experienced by an individual overall i would say absolutely it's justified i'm very happy my parents brought me into existence and i'm glad and i think it was justified for them to bring me into existence in light of all the well-being that i'm experiencing compared to all the well all the suffering i'm experiencing as a net compare Would the two together and good I job. absolutely good think job. it is ethically justified. Good job. Great job. Okay. okay. Now, Great. listen. Now, okay. So, can you show me the pure state of torture uh, that you were talking about. Already, you've talked. Now I'll talk. That's how the debates work, dumbass. All right. Mm -hmm. That's how debates work. Okay. You talk. I talk. Okay. Right. Okay. Do you, can you show well, me the pure well, state of torture? I mean, are we clear about that? I mean, because I'm going to end this live stream if you don't shut the fuck up. All right. So, settle down. Your question. No, dude. You, what was your question? My question is, can you show me a being who is experiencing a pure maximal state of torture? Absolutely. Which being? Uh, people that are being like, you know, starving to death right now. Are they experiencing a pure torture. maximal state of torture that their brain could possibly experience? Yeah, pretty much. Starving to death. Yeah. So every single one of their nociceptors are firing. All of that while you're existing right are now. Every, you know, are every one of their nociceptors firing? No, it's not. All of their nociceptors firing doesn't mean shit, dumbass. Well, it does, because if there is a certain amount of additional pain that they can listen, experience, listen, and they're not experiencing it, why do you think need then, then what happens is that they're not actually experiencing a maximal state of torture or suffering. Why if, do you think... By definition. No, all right, okay. Just So can you show me a being well, who is experiencing a maximal state of torture or suffering? How much pain they're feeling is totally fucking irrelevant based on the fact that there's no pain whatsoever inside of this bottle here, okay? There's no pain whatsoever on Mars, and that's because it never came into existence in the first place on Mars, okay? And it's not in this bottle right here. So you would have to say that something extremely negative was happening in this bottle right now in order to say that there was some sort of negativity in, involved in if I was as dishonest, if I was as dishonest in no, my redefinitions as you are, whatsoever with not coming in the first place. If I was as dishonest, the first place. If I was as dishonest in my definitions as you are, I would define well-being as just the absence of suffering, and just say that no, the fact no, that there is no well-being totally there. That's the point. That's about yeah, what. That's, that's, that's a dishonest. Is, right is, is, I'm showing you how your definition Listen, is, is dishonest. You are saying I'm not being a dishonest, definition. dumb fucking yep. little prick. Shut the fuck up and get fucked again, okay? okay you so, are fucking up. Again, if I was as dishonest as you are is in your redefinition, if I was dishonest, death was justified by an if orgasm. I was as dishonest as you are in the anti-natalist definition, as a, I could come at you from a natalist definition this, this and say the arguments. suffering this is just this the, is negative utilitarianism. The, that we're discussing the absence right of now. suffering and is just as dishonest as a definition as saying suffering as just the absence of well-being. This dumbass is really not working very well. well
Listen, that's that's the same. Off. That's you just need to get as muted as and shut the fuck up and listen to what I'm fucking saying right now. Are okay? you experiencing a maximal state of torture right now? You just yes, everyone fucking is by existing. Are all of your nociceptors firing right now? Your type no, A and type C nociceptors? So is there a more maximal no, state of torture that you could possibly experience right now? Coming into existence in the first place. Coming into existence in the first place means that you now feel pain, okay? And you don't feel pain at all. Feeling pain, you the feel maximal state no of torture pain. Listen, you feel no pain at all if you never come into existence. If you are in this bottle right now, there's an absolute, there's nothing in this bottle, okay? So there's nothing in the bottle, and that's because there's no pain, there's no negativity in the bottle, okay? Is feeling no pain the maximal the state of torture and suffering? Hmm? Is feeling pain the maximal state of torture and suffering? Yes. So it could, is it possible to feel more pain than you are right now? Yes, of course. And how is the amount of pain you're feeling right now the maximal state of torture and suffering? Because it's because not com when compared to not coming into existence, dumbass. I've explained to you multiple times that there's no negativity. Is there a this greater amount of pain that you Just could shut experience up right for a now? second, dude. I have to explain it again. Okay? Is there a greater so amount of pain that you could be experiencing mind. right now? You are defending a fucking position that is the absolute fucking uh, taken for granted norm amongst all the dumbasses here on fucking planet Earth. Is there a greater I'm amount of pain that, that you could experience right now? And actually creates less of the suffering. It actually creates less of the suffering. Are you in a maximal state of suffering right now? One person to Are you in a maximal that's state of vegans. suffering that's right infinity now? Vegans. Right that's now. infinity vegans. Infinity vegans. Are you experiencing a maximal state of suffering, suffering right now? Listen to me. You're a vegan. You just you just had the uh you know thing. Are you experiencing a maximal state of suffering right now? Everyone is that's watching this video. Is there a possible greater amount of suffering that you could experience? Right now, is there a possible greater amount of suffering that you could experience? Okay, listen, there there's possible there's greater amount of suffering, of suffering that you could experience. Once you exist already, but is there a possible exist, maximal amount of suffering that you could experience? Is there a possible maximal amount of experience of suffering that you can experience? Yes or no? When compared to is there a possible maximal amount of suffering that is greater than the suffering that you are making right now that you can experience? Yes or no? Is there a greater amount of suffering that you can experience right now? Yes or no? Yes, obviously. Okay, then how is it possible that you are experiencing a maximal state of suffering right now? By definition, it's a mathematical impossibility if there is a greater possible state of suffering that you can experience by definition you are not experiencing okay, the correct. maximal state of suffering right now do you understand so are you willing to concede that that was a false statement that you are experiencing no. a maximal state of suffering right now you no. if you, when are you I willing said, to concede no, that there I, what I said was what i said was when you don't come into existence in the first place you deceive a little weasel mm -hmm. you don't experience any of the any of the harm yeah okay. that would be a minimal state Right? You said that you were experiencing no, a minimal, maximal state. Zero state. There's no pain at all. Yeah, that's a minimal state of pain, which would be no, no pain. No, there's no pain at all. So do you no understand what the word do you understand what the word minimal existence? So what you're saying you is a fucking fallacious argument. What's, it's a fucking straw man. You're making you a straw man. understand what the most possible arguments statement would be. They're different arguments. Do you understand what the most possible Completely different arguments. I'm discussing whether or not coming into existence is a serious harm or not. If, if and you're you are experiencing about certain, whether or not you already exist. Do you understand? Do you understand that there is a spectrum you you're talking that, about? You understand that you're at the point. If you're what you're referring to now is at the point zero. Do you understand that existence you're experiencing is different a certain than amount of suffering right now? It is possible for you to experience more suffering right now. Therefore, you are not experiencing the maximal state of suffering right now. Right now, because I'm existing. Yeah, right, right now. Therefore, you are not experiencing the maximal possible state of suffering because it is possible for you to experiencing for you to experience. It is possible for you to experience a greater amount of suffering. Wow. You under, do you understand? So, therefore, it is a false claim. Therefore, it is false. Multiple times, yeah, therefore, it is false. You're it is making a, false a straw man. You're combining antinatalism and negative I'm, utilitarianism. I'm, I'm asking you a question. Are you experiencing the maximal state of suffering right now? I answered this question multiple times. What's yes, the answer? When okay. compared to not coming into existence in the first place. Okay. So when compared to not coming into existence in the first place, is it Good possible job. for you to experience a greater state of suffering than you are experiencing right now? So when compared to zero, let's say you're experiencing, let's say it's the, your value of suffering is 100. Compared to zero, is it possible for you to experience 150? Is it possible for you to experience 200? Is it possible for you to experience more? Zero when you don't compared come to non-existence, compared yeah, to non-existence, is it possible 
for yeah. you to experience you don't more experience suffering than you yeah. are right now? Is it possible? You don't experience any of the pain when you don't come into existence in the first place. Yeah. So is it possible for you to experience more suffering right now compared to zero? So right now you're experiencing no. a lot of suffering no. compared to zero. No. Is it possible no. for you to experience more suffering compared to zero? No. Listen, okay? You're just being a little sophist, weasel. Really? Okay. Saying we're using the definitions of words more or less, being using them properly, saying what, that you're not experiencing the maximal state of suffering because there's more suffering you can experience? That's when weaseling and suffering? When you don't come into existence in the first place, it's just Mars. There's no Do you name. understand you would experience more suffering if someone tor if someone tortured you and, and burned your eyeballs out right now than, than what? <laughs> what this guy is fucking insane. Degree of suffering? If right. someone were to go come to you right now and start torturing you, I'm gonna end this really quick, and uh, I'm gonna wrap this up in a minute here. It sucks because I can't mute him, so and I can't wrap it up really fast. So I would, or otherwise, I would just mute you. But you unmute yourself every single time and talk over me. So okay. Yeah. So is it possible for you to experience a greater state of suffering than what you're experiencing right now? It depends on the person. Yeah. The, their tolerance. Yeah, some people yeah. can, some people, some people can. can, some people can't, but that's not the argument ultimately, okay? Yeah. He, he's not even making the argument, is he? Yeah. I mean, he's not making the argument for our position, is he? No. No, exactly. So say that louder so they can hear you. No, I mean, yeah. obviously. Yeah, I mean, yeah, she's really Hey, how shy. you doing? She's, she's really shy, but ultimately. Oh, uh, now that uh, my dog. Hey, you got a dog? Hey, let me say hi to your dog. What's your dog's name? My dogs don't like you either. Wait, what's your dog's name? Wait, wait, wait. Let me, let me, wait, wait, wait. I want to make sure. I want to make sure you're dead. I'm such a child for a second. I'm possible. Bad day possible. You are making a straw man argument right now, okay? And the reason for that mm -hmm. is because you're talking about already existing. And we're talking about not existing mm -hmm. in the first yep. place. Yep. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. So, so compared to not existing, is it possible for you to experiencing more suffering than what you're experiencing right now? Why would you do that when you know when you because you, you said you've ex you are currently experiencing the maximal state of suffering? That was what no, you said. Dumbass. Listen, you're making a compared to not existing. You it's said a compared straw to man. Not, it's a straw man because compared to not existing, place. you are experiencing the maximal it's state of suffering compared existing. to not existing. Is that what you're saying? Do you think that? Let me just ask you this. So I've answered all your questions multiple times. You have not. Yes, I have. You fully. have not. I fully answered your questions, and this will be recorded. You have not, sir. No, I have completely answered your questions. Buddy, my dude, you have not. If Do you think – now you have to answer my question, all right? Mm -hmm. You have to answer this question. Yep. All right. So do you think that not existing in the first place, so not being born, is the same as existing already? No, those are not the so same. Why would you ask the question – so because you just one, said, no. one so, obviously no. so why would you ask the question, what could be the maximal amount of pain that I could experience when it's a null factor when you don't come into existence in the first place, and therefore there's no pain to begin with? Yeah, so it's how completely comparable. Yeah. So you just said I, no. Here's how I would answer. You just said no. They're not the same thing. Yeah, of course they're, they're not, not the same thing. Of course they're, they're not. It's but the, the question yeah, is completely it's intelligible. So why then would you make a straw man and ask about what we're doing while we're so already here? Of course, of course they're not the same thing. Okay, that so why being, would you ask about what we're doing the while reason, we're the reason, here? The reason I would ask, the reason I would ask regardless, even if they're not the same thing, is because one involves zero suffering. <laughs> hey, what's up, buddy, my dude? What kind of dog you got? Good dogs. Yeah, is it a yeah. lab? What kind of dog? <laughs> there are uh, two beagles and a beagles. I love I love dogs. I uh yeah I'm a I'm a. Are you a dog anti natalist? Wait, are you a, are you a dog anti natalist? With that, okay. You just started right, so, becoming a vegan a couple of yeah. days ago or something so, like that. So so the reason the reason I would I would ask so not existing would be zero suffering. Would you agree with that statement? Yes. And in within the spectrum of existing, there are different degrees of suffering that someone can experience. Would you agree with that statement? Once you're in existence, once already. you're in existence, once you're in existence, compa so compared to zero, there is a certain degree of suffering you can experience that's greater than zero. No, but once you exist already, all you do is experience. All you do is experience the maximum amount of suffering. 
Yes, compared there to is not no, existing so at all. There's no greater possible yes, suffering that could compared experience. to not existing at all in the first place. Yes. Okay. No. Well, that's not what I asked you. I didn't say compared to. Well, compare even compared to zero. So compared to zero, if you have a certain amount of suffering, is that the maximal amount of suffering? So let's say compared to zero, you have the number one hundred. Dude. Okay. Is that the maximum number? What you don't understand is one hundred the maximum number compared so, to zero. If we're going to just so listen, you you can keep trying to derail this, but I'm just going to. It's it. not a derail. It's core no, to the central point. Doing nothing but trying to derail it, and you're such a dishonest pile of fucking shit. And but it's core, it's let's, core just, to the let's just point. focus for a second. I, I still right, haven't so gotten an answer to the question. Well all right, compared this is all been compared to zero. You, compared you to zero, you thought there is there a greater? Is there a bottle. more maximum amount of suffering like that you can experience? I mean, you're just, you're not very funny. Is you're there not, a not, greater you're, amount of you're, suffering? You've than never you. studied this, you're not okay. Mathematically, and, you're not, and, okay? and based so, on your neuroanatomy, is there a greater amount of suffering that you can experience right now? Yes or no? Uh, dude, I've if already someone were to torture you, would you experience more suffering? Obviously, you would experience more suffering. Okay, so therefore, what you are experiencing right now is, by definition, even compared to non-existing, not the maximum amount of suffering by definition. No, when you yes. don't, exist, there's yes. no suffering at all. Yes. So this is, has to do with math, and this is, has to do with no, your, your neuroanatomy and math. No. This is a denial of math at this point. This only this when you denial of mathematical you. operators and how they function. Okay, yeah, you're so not. Do you understand? Math there are genius. words like less and more. There's right, zero. Listen, yeah, you're not exactly a math genius. And then there is. Listen, and then oh, there's a certain spectrum, and there's greater or there's greater and less. So there's these concepts, right? So you have zero, which is non-existing. Yeah. You have a certain amount of suffering, and is it possible to have a greater amount of suffering? So even when compared from zero, yes. just because some amount right. of suffering is there doesn't mean that it's the max amount because there could be a greater amount. Okay, so do you listen, understand? Do you understand this concept? Do you understand the concept that there is no pain inside of this bottle? That's not an answer to my question. Do you understand the fact that there's no Yeah, pain so let's go with zero. So there's zero. Let's say there's zero, there's no pain. Zero there. inside of here, okay? Yeah, so there's, that's then zero. there be a maximal amount of pain if there's zero and it's just zero? There's nothing there. You'd yeah, have to come into zero. existence in order for there to be a problem. Yeah. And in that ex and within that spectrum well, what of existence, the fuck are you talking about? You're comparing to that spectrum of existence within compared to non-existence. There is a certain things. amount of suffering compared to zero. So the amount of two suffering compared things. to non-existence, and when someone two exists compared to non-existence, they can have a certain finite amount of suffering. If there, it it's is possible for them to have a greater things. amount of. If it is possible for them to have a greater amount of suffering then it therefore is mathematically and logically the case that the amount of suffering one is experiencing right now is not the greatest maximal possible amount of suffering. So therefore it is not the statement that you are experiencing the maximum amount of suffering right now is a false statement. No, you are when compared to not coming into existence in the first place. Yes, yeah, so compared to not coming to existence in the first place, which represents the suffering value of zero, there is a spectrum within the amount of suffering uh, that someone can experience in existence which can be a finite amount, and it is well, possible for there to be a greater well, amount. Therefore, the statement that you are just shaking your head experiencing out the so greatest funny. possible amount of suffering right now is a false statement. No, it's not false. Listen, it is a, a mathematically false statement. Listen, if you don't come into existence in the first place, it's completely different than already existing. So if you don't come into existence in the first place, there's obviously mm -hmm. no chance to have a maximal or a minimal uh, possibility of pain. well when we it's talk when we talk about pain. so the value is zero the value of suffering is zero for a being that does not exist yes yeah, so how do you yet. compare a yeah. maximal amount of something compared to something that has a value of zero and it's infinitely mm -hmm. zero infinitely zero yes if i don't make one uh, can you explain to me what progeny? infinitely zero means okay if i don't make a progeny all right they're okay, infinitely a vegan because they're never what going is, to what does infinitely zero mean I just explained it to you. I'll explain it again. Do you mean, do you mean uh, the value being zero throughout all of time? I don't make a progeny. They're infinitely a vegan. They're you infinitely understand that a vegan concept? because they don't make a progeny. Yes. If I don't make a progeny, that all of my future progeny are vegans. Okay. So you're saying that you would experience zero, so that the non-existent being would experience zero for an infinite amount of time. Uh, yeah, zero pain. Yeah, zero pain for an infinite amount of time. Yeah, for the rest of time. Okay, so compare now. Let's compare that for something that exists. 
Is there why? Why the fuck would we do that? Because you just said exist. you just yes. said they don't you just exist. said you are experiencing the maximal the amount of suffering. There being no negativity in this fucking bottle. There's no yep. negativity. I just told you it was zero. There's no negativity happening on Mars. That's because there's no sentient life that ever came into existence. On those in those things. Yeah. Okay. So let's say there or is a sentient. Right now. I mean, look. Let's just say you have two beings that exist. Look, dude, you're not can understanding. One experience more shit. suffering than the other. Can can one compare? Let's say you have three. You, let's say you have a non-existent being, a being that exists. So let's say you have you right now, and let's say you have me. How would you rate the amount of suffering that each person is experiencing based on me, you, and the non-existent being? Dude. Shut the fuck up and well, answer, can you answer the questions, questions now. So there's three you, beings. Nothing but be a useless there's fucking three, prick. There's this three beings. Time. There's right. three beings so right now. Talk to me so incessantly. It's so fucking annoying. There's and I can't figure out how to mute your stupid there's ass. You, so there's I can you, ask me. you questions that you have to fucking respond to. All right. So there's you, me, Do and then there's a non-existent being. So there's, if there's time. you, me, and a non-existent being, how right. would you so order now, the amount of suffering that each so being is experiencing? You've right been now. debunked and dismantled already. So just that whole point that you made about yeah. somehow you so being able to you, experience a me maximum and a non-existent being. How would you rate? How would you rate the amount of suffering each of us is experiencing? There's you, me, and a non-existent being. If you had to rate the amount of suffering each being is experiencing right now in order, how would you rate it? Uh. uh I would rate it fuck you and answer my question now because you're hey, that's not that's not an answer to my question. Yeah, no, no, no. That's not you. an answer. Listen, you so if there's you, you me and a non existent thing, question, how would you rate multiple times in, in a row order, dickhead, the amount of suffering each one of us is experiencing? In the first place so if there's you, me, and a non existent being, 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 how much suffering would you rate guys, each you individual? I'm this guy. What do you think I should do, man? So if there's yeah, you, me, and a non existent being. Because you're a dumb ass. All right, you're a dumb ass and an asshole. And if you make a person, you create infinite suffering if mm -hmm. they create more people, okay? Until the, if, or if the you know, human race eventually ended, okay? That, until that point, you would create that suffering, okay? Let me just, let me just ask you, let me just ask you this. Let me just ask you this. Do you honestly think if you nuke the fault lines that you would reduce, reduce, produce enough carbon dioxide to acidify the ocean? Uh, well, it's happened naturally already with the Permian extinction. So, no. So, do you understand that there are acidophiles that exist? There are acidophilic fish. There are fish that yeah, actually would do neurons. better. Yeah, they they have neurons. There are fish that have neurons that no. would exist better in an acidic environment. No, they wouldn't exist in a fucking carbon dioxide acid environment. Do you understand how much pH that would decrease the ocean by? Do you understand that it would create an acidic ocean that would eventually yeah, make the ocean fish go that, away? There are fish that survive better on pH of five. Yeah, and the oceans create. would go away eventually because the oceans acidic. would go away. That, yes. No, that's not. Yes, that eventually make, they would. The acidity. Yes. <laughs> this so is a fact of chemistry. Okay, so the the ocean going away is not entailed well, by the acidity of the ocean. You do a really good job. All right, you could do a lot better. The ocean job. going away is not entailed by the acidity of the ocean. So there's a Henderson Hasselbach so equation that, the, that describes so how carbon dioxide would acidify the ocean. And the if you, even if you were to nuke the fault fucking lines, useless if even you if you were to nuke the fault lines, do you think veganism would get anywhere, asshole? Do you think veganism would get anywhere, asshole? Do you think veganism would get anywhere? Even if you were to nuke, even if you were to nuke the fault lines, you would not acidify the ocean. Do you think veganism would get anywhere if you could? Just had been if you were to nuke the, the fault think, lines, you would not acidify the oceans to do do you think veganism would even get if you were to nuke the fault lines, you would not do you think veganism would get even if you were to nuke the fault lines, you would not acidify the ocean to a substantial degree to eliminate all of the life with neurons anyway. There's no evidence for that. There's no evidence that there would be enough carbon dioxide reached to cal formulate to calculate into the Henderson Hasselbach equation of a weak acid such that the pH of the ocean would end up killing all life with neurons. There's no evidence for that. That's a full, that is an unsubstantiated claim. Furthermore, there are fish that actually are acidophiles. Listen, all right, look, look, all right, you've gotten all autistic on me now, so just listen, okay? Not, not autistic. So you're you're making you, you claim so the Permian extinction. You think the Permian listen, extinction did not wipe out all life. Useless the Permian fucking extinction. Shit. We're talking about random. What, did the Permian extinction eliminate all life? Did the Permian listen, extinction the Permian eliminate all life? With did the Permian extinction Jesus eliminate all Christ. life? And you're telling me I'm talking over you, dude? Do, I let you, you talk, and then you talk over me. Did the Permian <laughs> extinction eliminate all life? There is no evidence that nuking any part of the ocean will eliminate all life. All life with neurons, even.
That's not the argument. Nuking a fault line would cause nuking a, a fault line would. There's no evidence nuking a fault line would cause enough carbon dioxide. Definitely, you're an asshole. Nope. Guys, if you can't understand if this person is an asshole, I don't know if you can understand what an asshole actually is, okay? You should try to establish first what a fucking person's motives are, what their goals are. This person's a natalist, all right? They have a biased fucking natalist agenda with absolutely no intent of understanding what they're Making babies. Is. Yeah, making babies. Yeah, making Making death. babies. Making, making, making them death. babies. Making that's yeah. what we're going to do. Making death. Making <laughs> loss. Yeah, that's what you do when you make babies. Do you so, have any evidence that uh, megalomania. Let me ask you a so that you can serve megalomania and sadistic vicariousness yeah. and other types let's, of things that are too sadistic to even be called fucking selfishness? Let, yes. let me let me ask you this: even even with the goal of ending all life, even with that goal, the problem is you would need a way that you can ensure that you are ending all neuronal life and. To nuke the fault lines is not a way to do that. It's not established. It's it's, it's not established that there would be enough carbon dioxide to actually acidify the ocean, something so vast as the ocean, to a degree that would bring the pH to levels of three or two, which okay. would eliminate are, are all neuron Can I establish the argument so, now? So the, 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 natalist, the, the natalist argument, even within the antinatalist position, is that in order to actually get to the point where you would eliminate all of life, because if you accomplish this, then all that's going to happen is other beings would take our place in ecological niches and suffer more. So all you would you would actually have to advocate for is to actually make babies and continue the production of science until you can build a Protoss armada, armada with uh, whatever uh, with antimatter bombs or whatever to, in order to to eliminate life. Because otherwise, all you would accomplish, even if you nuke, even if you used all the uranium in the crust of the Earth, all you would accomplish is Dude, more suffering. You are such an asshole. I wish I could permanently mute you, but I can't. Uh, I tried now multiple times. You always unmute yourself. This is so fucking All annoying. if you were to accomplish is more suffering. How do I mute this asshole? Are you done yet? Do you want to build a Protoss armada? Are you are you done yet? Can you respond to my argument? Yes. Okay, so can you explain to me the evidence for nuking the fault line would cause enough carbon dioxide such that the henderson hasselbach equation would result in a pH of 3 or 2 or something even remotely close with that amount of water to eliminating the sentient life. Can you provide me with that evidence empirically, yes or no? Yes. Now okay, where is it? Okay, all right, so the Permian extinction mm -hmm. happened, uh, it had happened already, nature did it, just by itself. Did the Permian extinction end all life? You're just already interrupting. Did the Permian extinction end oh all life? Oh my God, how can you do this? Permian I, extinction is irrelevant. How are you this much of a fucking narcissist? The Permian extinction did not end all life. Your goal is to end all life. Right now, if the Permian extinction were something you were going for, oh right now, God. what would happen is you would have your goal already, but you don't because people exist. Mm -hmm. So you need something better than the Permian extinction. Do you have evidence that you have something better than the Permian extinction? Okay, the permanent extinction eradicated ninety six percent of all life, okay. and it did it and it did it just based on nature. Okay, there was no human being is inter intervening whatsoever. There was no intelligence intervening whatsoever. You don't think that we could eradicate that by emitting enough uh, carbon dioxide into the atmosphere and watching from like space or something while it all went away? Obviously, we could. We would. We, this is just a conclusion of that. Okay, this is just a conclusion of the arguments. Okay, the so fact, just to correct you on the numbers, so the Permian oh, extinction did oh, not eliminate ninety-seven percent of all Dude, life. That's I talked point. for two seconds. So you made a false claim. I'm defending an argument that's so not the Permian extinction. Held not by the, the vast majority of people, and you are just talking Why over me, Permian you extinction. asshole! Shut the fuck up. Up. The Permian You're a useless extinction. fucking asshole. Permian Shut up. It's estimated Shut up. that the Permian extinction wiped out more than 90% only of the marine species and only 70% of the land and animals. So there were still 30%. Somebody please tell me 10 how to mute this asshole so that I can marine respond. Life remaining. Please so show me. That is a Every false time plan. I put mute on, okay? And what? He fucking unmutes it, all right? He just talks incessantly and what you fucking need, what you look, need to, unmutes himself what you need to do here is you need to provide evidence that a hundred over and over and over 100 percent of neuron based life would be eliminated can you provide me evidence that a hundred percent of neuron based life would be eliminated by nuking the fault lines there how much carbon dioxide again I want the numbers the amount of carbon dioxide that would be released the retention rate of the carbon dioxide in the ocean 
the mass of the ocean and formulate it into the henderson hasselbach equation such that we would get a ph that would eliminate all neuron-based life given the fact that there are acidophilic neuron-based life creatures can you do that for me look i already established that it happened already naturally without any human intervention whatsoever that it eradicated 96 percent of all life on planet earth 70 so percent of of land-based life and about 90 percent of marine-based life no it eradicated 96 percent of all life based no on it did not no nope. nope. the permian extinction 70 didn't. the permian extinction only eradicated 70 percent of land animals it wiped out more than 90% of only the marine species. Okay. okay. Well, we can figure out other ways to do it. Okay. That's that's pretty damn close to getting rid of all. The, all right? the, the upper limit, the 96% well, well, figure on only refers. No, no, no. I'm not going to let you make a false statement. The upper limit, 96%, is only of the marine species. It's actually 90 to 96%. And the ninety-six, and that figure is only of the, well, the most marine species. It's not all life. So the statement I that ninety-six percent of all life were eliminated is actually a false statement. It's only seventy percent of the land life was eliminated. Only seventy percent of land animals were eliminated, and ninety-two, ninety-six percent of marine life was eliminated. So you saying 96% of all life was eliminated by the Permian extinction is a false statement. And even if it were a true statement, your goal is to do something greater than that. Your goal is to eliminate 100% of neuron-based life. Can you provide evidence using the amount of carbon numbers of carbon dioxide that would be released, the retention of carbon dioxide and the rate and how much of it would escape, and using the size of the ocean, the mass of the ocean, can you plug that information into the henderson hasselbach equation such that you get a pH that would result in something that would eliminate the acidophilic creatures that exist right now? Can you provide evidence for that? I'm sure we could because it's, it definitely exists. A okay, go, go for it. Provide evidence. Well, the fact that a nuke can mm -hmm. be created in, in just as big of an, a quantity as you want Mm -hmm. okay. Yep. Well, you have a limited amount of uranium in the crust of the Earth. And we could get it from other places. Do you, you know? Do you know how much? Do you know the max? Even if you were to get the maximum amount of uranium, do you know? Understand that even if you were to extract Dude. all the uranium from the crust of the Earth, I actually did the numbers on this. Even if you were to use all of the uranium on Earth, which you actually won't be able to end up doing for practical reasons, but even if you were able to do that, if you were to throw that into the largest nuclear bombs that ever existed, you were to put that in the ocean, the best you can hope for is to increase the temperature of the ocean by two degrees Celsius. In the bottom, and especially if you're talking about the bottom of the ocean, a nuke only, only expands to about one kilometer just because of the immense pressure there's a large explosion that it only reaches one kilometer and the radiation actually because of the di di uh, difference in difference in density the radio the radioactive water actually raises up so it's a highly ineffective way of destroying the deep sea life it's very impractical to do this even if you were to take all of the uranium from the crust of the earth can you provide evidence that you can do that okay so uh you should make a video with all your numbers and everything. And then we could come at all the numbers from a video response. Right. So, but you have to yeah, listen. So can you provide the evidence? Yeah. Go ahead. Do it. Where, where's the, where, how much, so tell me how much carbon dioxide, how many kilograms of carbon dioxide will be released uh, by nuking the fault lines? Okay. Well, there's obviously enough carbon dioxide inside. How many kilograms? There's plenty of it, okay? Plenty it, is not an, a kilogram number amount. By itself, even if it eradicated 70% of all life on mm -hmm. land and 90% and of all life in the oceans, mm -hmm. that would still be more than enough to harness. Oh, it wouldn't. Yes. It would, would result in, because here's the problem. Here's why it wouldn't be enough. If you don't get 100% of neuron-based life, you've actually caused more suffering, and here's why. If you don't get 100% extinction of neuron-based life, all that happens is you create free ecological niches. And if you create free ecological niches, what happens is there's an enormous selective pressure to exploit those ecological niches. The only difference is there would be more radiation in those niches. And so the only thing you would do is life that already has neurons would just continue to evolve again, but this time with more suffering. So all you would have done and accomplished is created a world with more suffering. Yeah, okay, so... That's why you need 
that's if it fails, okay? So if you think that it's going to fail somehow, but the reality is, is that suffering is happening right now in a preposterous amount. Yeah, and, and you would increase suffering. You would increase suffering. If you don't get 100%, you will increase suffering. You does not let me get a comment in. All right, settle down, all right? So there is a tremendous amount of suffering that is happening right now, and it's been happening for the last 541 million years. Yep. Okay. So any reduction in that, if, if it was another extinction that even reduced that wouldn't 70, be a reduction. 50 percent, it would be a reduction. It would it would be a heavy reduction, and we could get just the fact that it's possible to eradicate 90 percent of all the life in the oceans, and that wouldn't be a reduction on, on the on the land. Listen, and just the fact that it is possible to do that, okay, would mean via just natural. Just the natural thing that happened, okay? The, the stupid ass nature that created that would make it so likely that with, with intelligence added in, it would be to stop uh, it completely. So, and and I'd also like to add in really quickly that. Can you we're explain simply, how it would not we're, result in we're more suffering? Discussing suffer? the conclusion of the argument. And the, without discussing the argument beforehand, okay? So the fact that coming into existence is always a serious harm and not coming into existence is simply not a serious harm is proven by the fact that there's no negativity happening on Mars, okay? There's absolutely no negativity happening on Mars and that's because right now as of 2018 and that's because no sentient life ever came into existence on Mars, okay? So there's zero negativity and what you can establish from that is the fact that there's no chance for any sort of pain whatsoever. There's no chance for any negativity. There's no chance for any holocausts or death or misery or anything like that, or being eaten alive like trillions of animals have been ha happening. That's been happening to trillions of animals every second of every day for the last 541 million years. Okay. This wouldn't happen anymore if we eradicated it all. All right. If you and eradicated it all. Yes. Can you, can you eradicate it all right now? And we can. Uh, with, How? We, because nature did it in, 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 and nature did not do it. Nature it's eradicated seventy percent of mammalian animals, and, uh, sorry, of land animals, and nature eradicated and ninety to ninety-six percent of marine animals. Nature has never eradicated all of life, not that we know of. So, can you do it? Give me the evidence. Give me the numbers. Can you provide me evidence that you can get a hundred percent of neuron-based life? We can. We can. We How? Just, Give me the numbers. I said already. How, many, carbon dioxide, how Look, many kilograms? Your initial carbon argument dioxide. was. Your initial Can you argument. Give me how many kilograms of carbon dioxide would be released by nuking a fault line, given that uh, in the bottom of the ocean, or even in the large, even in deep enough in the ocean, nukes only expand to about one kilometer, even in their blast radius. Uh, listen, all right. A nuke can because be because of the pressure that's there. Can you give me the numbers? Fault lines are above the ocean as well, and they would acidify the oceans. And How impossible. many kilograms of carbon dioxide? A, per, a, a large amount. A large is not a number or value for a kilogram of carbon dioxide. Yeah, all right. Well, if you're an autist, it's not good enough for you. No, right? because it, it, it's important. The reason it's important is because there's a, also a lot of ocean, too. And the fact that there's a lot of carbon dioxide. No, I don't really think that you're sorting this so stuff out completely. The, fact, the, the larger the ocean is, the less the pH of the ocean would decrease for the same amount of carbon dioxide. So right. we need to use the numbers and plug them into what's called the Henderson Hasselbalch equation, which is a equation for weak acids and how they disassociate and, and the resultant pH of the solution. So we need the numbers. No reason to start to attack the conclusion when. It can happen. Well, there is a reason because if you can't do it, then any, then even we go existence would even our going out of existence would just result in other species taking over and suffering. It would just result in more suffering, the maximal state of suffering, maybe it would result in the reduction. We would definitely reduce it. No, it would. No, no, it may, it may very well not. It could result in more suffering. Okay, so but ultimately, how do you know it won't more suffering? Wait, how do you how do you know it won't result more suffering? Listen, all right, so you're making the conclusion. I was going to say this before. but How do you know it won't result in more suffering? Okay, because you'd be absolutely sure you'd watch from space or something. Make sure. You'd watch from in space. Okay, so your goal is to make a Protoss Armada, basically, to have a spaceship and to make sure the entire Earth is completely evaporated and exploded and then to explode your spaceship itself. Basically, that's the end goal here. Well, maybe not explode the spaceship yourself. No, the end goal is to let... Antinatalism take its toll, which is to make sure that people don't 
reproduce for absolutely no and reason. animals don't count wait animals are going to be there animals are going to be there reproduce in the first place okay so but what's no the point of that if animals would just take over the niche and just suffer themselves well i just said we could get rid of it with the the uh, the, the protoss the protoss cannon no no the the uh, nukes the that already exist not the nukes that already exist there's, i haven't seen any con any convincing evidence that nukes that already exist will eliminate 100 percent of life and i've run the numbers I have not seen it. If you can change yeah. my mind, I'm open to persuasion, but I would like to see your numbers. Well, you ran the numbers initially and you didn't even factor in that they would have to do with a uh, fault line and I corrected you on that. No, so. no. So you, you did not because yeah, you yes. did not. Nope. The reason you reason right. I saw I Nope. Nope. So fault line is nope, fault you. line. Nope. You no, completely you mentioned, never mentioned any sort of fault line in that debate. debate. Anyone that wants to watch the full and, and the reason, dismantling the reason, of his initial can go watch positive versus my response the reason, to positive versus the reason you made such a fool of yourself. Type in positive versus negative rights. The, the, right. the reason, the reason you made such a fool of yourself when you talked about nuking the fault line. So he didn't even talk the about the reason you made such a fool of yourself when you talked about nuking the fault lines was because, was because you did not even realize that the ocean would be so vast that you need an enormous amount of carbon dioxide to actually even decrease the ocean by 0 so 0.1 pH. Fault lines and in that initial video? Well, you're making the claim, so I'm asking for the evidence. How many kilograms? Well, no, that's not answering the question. No, did you, you claim that you can do it. You, did you claim articulate that you can do it? You about there, the are, there are us acidophiles. No, there you is, didn't. No, you you're didn't. Making, you make a claim. No, you made a claim that you would be able to. Anyone who wants to know this for a fact. You made a claim by, be, by claiming you are able to. Longer. Go check out positive versus you negative. You made a rights. claim that you are. Go check out positive versus negative. You made rights. a claim that you are able to do it. The Go full, check out positive versus negative, negative rights. And because you made that claim, I'm asking you to provide evidence for the amount hey, of carbon dioxide that, please, that would acidify the ocean. Can you give me the number? You're talking. Give me the number. Okay. Good. Good. Can you give me the number? Uh. What's the, the number? Numbers are irrelevant right now. Numbers we, are wait wait. Numbers know, are irrelevant. Numbers are irrelevant. Right now, yeah, especially when how we are don't numbers irrelevant? Listen, the number the, do you think the number results in the pH? Numbers are, the, I said the numbers are irrelevant. Dioxide results in the pH. How is it irrelevant? Jeez, oh, man. So can okay, you give so me the number? Let's think about this for a second. All right. And you give. I want to know if you can give me the number. People don't. Have how many kilograms of carbon dioxide will be released in the ocean? Illusion. So number. if people were trying to just make the conclusion of veganism, protein though. Dodging the question. Continue dodging to the question. Protein, can you or, give me the number of dodging the question? Can you dodging. give me the amount of kilograms resulting from the nuke of no, a fault not line? A sophist prick like you. Sophist? Make no, that's important. About you how need much to actually calculate you, 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 you can fucking what? Just 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 figure out all the uranium that's in the earth's crust and make a fucking conclusion you're talking for that about, when that's not even making a claim thing. that you're the that they put on if on you are the, making uh, a claim if dude, you are making a claim that you put, can uh, result you can extinct all deep sea life what? by nuking a fault line what you need to do is you need to tell me how many kilograms of carbon dioxide would result from nuking the fault line. You need to provide the evidence for that, and then you need to calculate that. You need to put that into the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, considering how vast the ocean is. You need to put in the mass of the of the ocean itself. You need to put in how much volume the ocean has of the solution, and you would need to do the disassociation, and you would need to calculate the result in pH. If you can't do that, you don't have evidence that nuking the fault lines would Good result job. in... You sounded Good smart. Good Should job, pretentious prick. Okay, you sounded okay, smart. Okay, so can you provide the evidence or not? Good job, pretentious. Can you under can you provide evidence or not? Good job. You sounded smart. Good job. Is that can what you, you want to provide the evidence or not? Is that how you get your dick hard or something? Can you provide the, the evidence or not? SHD, can you yeah. provide me with the evidence? Can you, spawn? Can you provide you evidence to substantiate your claim or not? Is that how you do it? Can you provide evidence to substantiate your claim or not? Yeah, that's how you do it, isn't it? That's how you shit out spawn. It's with your pretension. Can, we pro can you provide the evidence to substantiate your claim or not? Uh, yes, yeah, plenty. Okay, of so well, give me the number of kilograms. So, how many kilograms of carbon dioxide will be released from a fault line when you when it is nuked? And give me the data showing that how much how many kilograms is actually there. Plenty. It's already happened. Plenty is not a number. Plenty is not a number. So, how? Give me, a, give me how much? More. Give me a number. How, well, how many kilograms of carbon dioxide would be released from the fault line? A lot. 
A lot is not a number. So, because like, also, a, there's a, also a lot, because the reason, okay, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to, pain unnecessarily is still I'm going, I'm going to, I'm going to explain to you why it matters. I'm, I will explain to you why it matters. You are a useless. I will explain, I will explain to you why it, I will explain to you why it matters. The reason it matters is because just like there could be a lot of carbon dioxide, there's also an enormous amount of ocean. So enormous that the amount of carbon dioxide used for every for a solution that's very large, the same amount of carbon. Watch from the, space. The, you know what I mean by solution? Solution being a solvent, a, a solvent like water. Water is a water is a solvent. Yeah, we get rid of this. Yeah, we get rid of. So the larger the larger the amount of water there is, the same amount of carbon dioxide will result in a lower pH decrease. So you actually need to look at the numbers if you want to say that this can actually work. So and what also needs to work is the pH needs to decrease below the acidophiles. So even there are acidophilic creatures that can survive well in acidic environments. So you, you need to make yet? it so acidic. Oh, what you need to do is you need to is make it so acidic. Your goal here is to talk more than me or you something? Need, is you that need what your goal is, it, to talk more? You need to make it so acidic that even Do you think that somebody's conclusion of something should establish the entire argument, or do you think that the argument should establish the conclusion? You should evidence. Do you think you should bring evidence for your claims? Yes. And okay, so tell me how many kilograms of carbon dioxide would be released from the fault lines? What? Where's the evidence well, for how the number? I don't of have to tell you exactly how much. Well, then how can you? How can you? Then how can you no make the claim? It if would you, have to be a lot, and we would watch from space. A lot is not a make sure that it happened. A lot. Of, a lot is not a number. So again, so how? How? A huge amount. How can you make the claim? What do you want? That the billions, degree of acidity, trillions and trillions you understand, of. You understand, like oh, acid base is not like an on and off switch. Do you understand, like there's a pH scale? And that different amounts of carbon dioxide will result in a different amount of pH okay. decrease. In all fact, right. all of the carbon dioxide that we we've released for, already for hundreds of years so have only acidified the ocean to a pH so degree of 0 0.1 or 0 0.2 maybe. So now, what is your evidence so that fault lines have enough? Oh, there we go. Uh, he's discussing the conclusion of antinatalism, which is ultimately the fact that I should have done that a long time ago. Why didn't you recommend me do that? <laughs> I should have done that a long, long time ago. Now he's gone, though, so that's good. So uh, if you were trying to defend veganism against somebody else, would you just make the arguments that you thought uh, – would you let them just continue to recite the how much protein would you actually need – in order to do this protein protein, you know, like over and over and over again. I mean, would you just recite that over and over again if I already said how much, like, you'd need the sufficient amount, you know? And he kept saying, you need the, the exact amount. I mean, you'd seriously be like, yeah, I mean, I mean, come on. You'd need a sufficient amount to get rid of it. It's, log it's logical. It's reasonable. Okay? And it's already happened in uh, – evolution has already made it happen. Okay? Uh, I'm sorry, um, existence here on planet Earth has already been almost completely extinguished by a natural event called the Permian extinction. All right, it was one of the, it was the largest by far extinction event that has ever taken place. And it happened just because of stupid nature emitting a huge amount of carbon dioxide from volcanic events that happened, uh, you know, I think it was 250 million years ago, I believe. Uh, so, yeah, so there you go. That's the conclusion which that comes down to. But it comes to that conclusion from the fact that pain is bad and pain is bad. Ultimately, this word that he wouldn't, didn't want to define at all and he kept wanting to talk over me, well-being, uh, you look at this, you know, there's no pure state of health. You're expiring from the time that you come into existence. You're expiring, okay? So you are experiencing the maximal amount of pain that you could ever experience when compared to the fact that you so there is no cancer there's no non-vegans there's no negativity in a preposterous amount which is ultimately what existence entails and megalomaniac sadistic vicarious fucking morons like dr avi will tell you otherwise, but the fact is they're not going to back it up with any evidence. They're not going to tell you how they can be purely healthy 
or purely comfortable or purely happy. You can only be less unhappy, less uncomfortable, less unhealthy. These are the, this is negative utilitarianism. This is the facts behind that. And he wouldn't let me establish that. He kept talking over me. Sorry, guys. If I could have muted him, I would be able to establish my arguments and then discuss it with them. But he just refuses to do that because he has to defend his natal biases. You know, he has to defend his megalomania. And he has to defend his megalomania and vicariousness and, you know, other types of stupid fucking shit. And ultimately, I debunked him completely and utterly. He had no fucking clue about the fault lines thing in the positive versus negative rights video that I made uh, that was responding to their positive versus negative rights shit. Okay? So the truth of the matter is that uh, need doesn't need to exist when you factor in the fact that coming into existence is always a serious harm and not coming into existence is simply not a serious harm, okay? And you can understand that by looking at a place like Mars and understanding that there's no negativity happening there. Uh, and that's because there's no sentient beings that ever came into existence on Mars, okay? So there's no negativity that's happening on Mars right now. And you, that means you can understand that negativity is brought into existence when sentient life, so humans and animals that are sentient feel pain, are brought into existence, right? So there you go. I mean, it's just that simple. Uh, there doesn't have need doesn't need to exist in the first place. If you make children, you make chances for people to be non-vegans. Okay, and if I convince people of antinatalism, which is true and correct and good, that makes infinity vegans. So if I create one antinatalist from this discussion, okay. That means that they, I create infinity vegans from that point on. And he create if he creates Spawn, there's no telling what his future progeny will do. Okay, uh, They could be non-vegans. They could be purely vegans to the end of time. And they still wouldn't be accomplishing the same amount of harm reduction as simply not bringing a person into existence in the first place. Even if one of his future progeny cured cancer, that still wouldn't be as much of a net harm reduction as simply not bringing a person into existence because not bringing that person into existence entails no future progeny that will die that will ever have cancer in the first place to get, have to get cured that will ever have any sort of other types of pain that they'll feel whatsoever okay which is ultimately just serves the megalomania and vicariousness and stupidity of somebody like dr avi okay or ask your or dupe yourself okay so yeah uh that's good enough. What do you think? Wrap it up? All right, so have as least bad of a day as you can, and uh, until next time. It's uh, good enough. There will be a next time. There will be a next time. Good job. Mark it up. All right. Thank you.